Wilson was sacked eight times and re-damaged an already tender shoulder. So while Wilson exits, the Raiders turn once again to the veteran Jim Plunkett to get them back on a winning track. For the New York Giants, last season's success created high expectations for this season. The headlines predicted greatness for this giant team, even before a single game was played. So when crucial mistakes led to an opening night loss to the Cowboys, the Giants had good reason to be disappointed. For their headlines far exceeded their performance. That disappointment helped fuel the fire of the Giants last week against San Diego as they intercepted five Dan Fouts passes to even their record at one and one. And now perhaps the Giants are ready to fulfill the promise of their headlines. Since the National Football League, and today it's the New York Giants against the Los Angeles Raiders at the fabulous Coliseum in Los Angeles. Weather conditions just could not be more ideal. Temperature 73 degrees, humidity 51 percent, wind southwest four miles an hour. The forecast is for it to remain as it is, mostly sunny. Good afternoon, I'm Pat Summerall, and as we're at this point in the season, this is as close to being a must game, although it's only the third week, for both of these teams, as a matter of fact, as one can be. The Raiders are 0-2, first time since 1964. The Giants are 1-1, but the Raiders face a very difficult challenge and a very difficult schedule. The big news, of course, is the fact that Mark Wilson is down, and Jim Plunkett will start at quarterback. With me is John Madden, my colleague, and John, uh, the news that Plunkett it will start at quarterback certainly has to have some effect. What will it be? Well, I know one thing about it. I know that the players have a lot of confidence in Jim Plunkett. But as Tom Flory says, Jim Plunkett has, has more comebacks than Rocky. But I don't think Tom Flores know if he has another one in him. I don't think Jim Plunkett knows if he has another one in him. I think they both feel they're going to find out today. Because we have to remember a couple things. One, Jim Plunkett hasn't played in a regular season game in a year. We also have to remember that he's 38 years old. And we also know that the Giants feel that they're going to go after him today. And I think Jim Plunkett and the offensive line of the Raiders have to be able to handle that rush. Now, on the other side, the Raiders are a tough defense. They figure if they're going to beat the Giants, they have to go after Phil Simms. So what we have here is two tough defenses that both feel that they have to go after and get the quarterback. All right, John, set to kick off. Cooper set to kick off for the Giants. Back deep, number 44, Stefan Adams. And number 41, Fulton Walker for the Raiders. Just activated. Cooper, the fifth Giant kicker in the last 17 games. Stability has not been one of their virtues so far. A strange lineup. He must be going to do something to the shot bounces in the direction of Walker now it's Stefan Adams who finally feels it hammers out to about the 19 maybe the 20 Robbie Jones who always is excellent on special teams is down quickly a return of 16 Jim Plunkett 38 years old and here is the defense for the Giants that he will face one of the very best Martin Burt and Marshall up front Excellent linebackers in Banks, Reasons, Carson, and Lawrence Taylor. And the secondary, Elvis Patterson and Perry Williams, the cornerbacks, Hill and Kennard, the safety. Raiders set to go from their own 20-yard line. Just underway with Jim Plunkett, the leader. Parksdale and Doki Williams, the two wide receivers, are both foot wide to the left. Plunkett is going to take a shot on first down. Out of the pocket he goes, chased by Marshall, gets rid of it. Intended for Marcus Allen, incomplete. Carl Banks, who has really developed, was the closest giant defender, number 58. Here's the Raider offense, a veteran offensive line. In front of those backs, Plunkett, 
Allen and Hawkins and the wide receivers Doki Williams and Rod Barksdale. That's the offensive line. Davis, Hannah, Mosbar, the center, Mickey Marvin and Henry Lawrence on the right side and Todd, Todd Christensen, the tight end. Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall, pro bowlers of last year. Those are the two guys the Raiders have to get blocked today in their pass protection scheme. Allen is the deep back. Hawkins in front of him. straight 100 yard games in regular season. He only got a couple before he stopped by Gary Reasons and Jim Burt. Tampa Bay finally won on the road. They beat Detroit at the Silverdome. Short trip back to Florida 24 20 their first win of the year. Welcome those of you who watched that contest. We're at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Third and seven here. No score. We're just underway between the Raiders and the Giants. See if they can protect Plunkett. That's going to be a challenge. I think the Giants are going to blitz them on this play. the offense still third down Tom Flores the Raider coach who replaced my colleague Mr. Madden too much time I'm saying how the heck with that you know that's not the way they wanted to get started he was talking about giving Jim Plunkett some confidence passes early and of course they didn't get that now they end up in third and long that's the thing they wanted to stay out of all day they need 12 and here comes that grip by Taylor and Marshall down the middle. Marcus Allen. And a Raider first down. Stopped by Andy Hedden. You know, that's the one thing the Raiders felt they have to do, that they're going to blitz Plunkett early. They know that. They want to see if they can block it and Plunkett can handle it. Now, when they do, they have to get those first few. They have to get that first good pass protection. You see the Raiders come up with good pass protection there in the first one, and now that may hold them off. That and Marcus Allen running. You know, you just can't concentrate on the passing and pluck it because you got Marcus Allen back there. Marcus Allen, one of the most complete backs in pro football. First down, Raiders just outside their own 30. Plunkett to Marcus Allen. For maybe one or two, Jim Burt and Harry Carson on the bottom of the pile again. Now, I'll tell you who made that play is Lawrence Taylor, though. He was a linebacker on that side. And he got penetration, and he didn't he didn't give Allen any room to run. Let's watch it again. Here's Taylor. You see him, he takes a pinch move. He goes inside of Bruce Davis. Davis holds him. Then he takes on Frank Hawkins. You see, so then he didn't have any lead block there. No gain for the Raiders. Make it second and ten. He got actually about a half a yard. Second and ten. Marcus back to throw. Rush quickly to Allen again. Marcus Allen close to another Raider first down. Gary Reasons on the stop. The Rams remain unbeaten 24-7. Those of you who watched that game, welcome to the Coliseum in Los Angeles. This is the first series. Raiders received the kickoff. They picked up two first downs. Pat Summerall here with John Madden. It is nothing, nothing. Raiders now will operate with two tight ends. This is going to be an interesting formation. If they're trying two tight ends, two running backs, I think that'll help them run against the Giants. Berkey Williams split wide to the left. Lunk it back to throw again. Batted away by George Martin. Looking in the direction of Frank Hawkins. That's the kind of pass he's caught all year long. Well, you know what he was doing? He was he was trying to get the ball out there, you know, on a short loop. Watch Lawrence Taylor rushing from the backside. He gets there to plunk it just as he throws the ball. That's the second time Taylor has taken an inside rush on Bruce Davis, and it's also the second time Bruce Davis has held him. Be somewhere along the way, the officials are going to see it and call holding number 79. LT in his sixth year, five times a pro bowler. Second and long. Hawkins was the man in motion to get to Marcus Allen. Allen around the outside gets about five. Carl Banks 
made the stop. You know, one of the interesting matchups that you have to like about this game is that the Marcus Allen has an NFL record for 100 yard games in a row. The Giants haven't allowed a 100 yard game in 10 games. So we got a good battle here. Marcus Allen, can he get his 100 again, or can the Giants stop him again? Third and five. On the far sideline, in front of the Giant bench, their quarterback, Phil Sims, loosening up. Trey Junkin is just wide right. Back goes Plunkett. Third and five. Caught by Junkin, who came all the way across the field. A juggling catch stopped by Elvis Patterson. You know, that's an interesting thing. You bring in the backup tight end. You put him out here as a wide receiver. There's Elvis Patterson in the corner. He should be able to cover that. But you get the big guy, pushes off him a little, gets a couple steps. Patterson can't catch up with him. You know, the same thing happened last week to the Raiders against the Redskins. They put Didier out there as a wide receiver, and he got the big play against the Raiders that beat him. Maybe that's how they got the idea. That's Junkin's first reception. Doki Williams is put wide to the right this time, and Parksdale down to the left. A gain of 19 on this last play. They give on a reverse to Doki Williams. Faced by Banks. He juked him. And finally, Banks makes the stop. Lawrence Taylor was the first man to face him. A gain of five. Fourth quarter score, Seattle ahead of New England. Kansas City over Houston in the first. You know, that play was set up for Lawrence Taylor because when you run away from Taylor, he pursues so quickly that the Raiders felt that they could get it going that way and then come back against him. The only thing is he's too good athlete. He can pursue that way and still make the tackle on the reverse. It'll be second and five at the Giant 30. Allen Lewis. To Junkin. To the 10. Taylor on a stop, a gain of 20, and Junkin damaged his knee. No question about that. It just collapsed. You know, Trey Junkin was a linebacker who the Raiders converted to offense and tight end. Plunkett is looking deep. Look, he's looking deep, looking deep, coming back. Then he came back to Trey Junkin underneath. As Plunkett looked deep, the giant defense went deep. And then Junkin was able to come underneath it. Watch what happened right at the end of the tackle. He's hit high, but the knee collapses on him. Look at that left knee as he got that collapsed and then bent. Whew. It bent the way it's not supposed to bend. While they get uh, Trey Junkin over to the sideline, that's a final. Denver over Philadelphia, 33-7. Woeful days for Buddy Ryan. That's in the fourth quarter. 35-34 Dallas over Atlanta. Both of those teams went in unbeaten. Tampa Bay 24-20 over Detroit. That's a final. Rams a final. They beat Indianapolis. Buffalo beat St. Louis. That's their first victory. And again, Denver over Philadelphia. Minnesota beat Pittsburgh 31-7. That doesn't look like the same group of Steelers. Seattle 38-31 over New England in the fourth. That's a dandy. Miami and the Jets 38-38 in the fourth. Marino has thrown five touchdown passes. <laughs> Allen. To about the six. Reasons on the bottom of the pile again. A gain of six for Marcus Allen. You know, one thing big about this game is the Raiders have had trouble in their first two games with pass protection. Here, they've come out and they've established it on this first drive. You know that Marcus Allen can run. You know that he's going to run. If the Giants were going to get him. They were going to have to get him through the, the pass rush, but they haven't done it on this drive. The first pass that Junkin caught coming across the middle. Before Banks trips him up. Half of the attack is that great back, Marcus Allen. Pretty well self-explanatory. Well, the one thing, they, they would like to have more touchdowns and more receivers, but they have young receivers. Jesse Hester, they're starting wide receivers out. They're starting Rod Barksdale. Never played football in high school or college. 
scale is down at the bottom of your picture. Plunkett looking in that direction. Lost it. Out of the end zone, Marcus Allen came down with the football, but he came down outside of the green and onto the white. You know, again, Jim Plunkett has had time. He's had time to look for his first receiver, look for a second receiver, look for a third receiver. I'll tell you, that, that is out of bounds, out of the end zone, but it was still a great catch, wasn't it? Getting up in the air like that and bringing it down with one hand. He is a remarkable athlete. Chris Barr will come on to try the field goal. And the injured Mark Wilson, who had started the first two games as quarterback for the Raiders, will hold. Mark Wilson to hold. Barr hasn't missed. From 22 yards out. Raiders. Well, again, the thing that John Madden was talking about, the thing that the Raiders felt that they must do is protect Jim Plunkett. And I would say on that first drive, John, they've been pretty successful at that. Well, and you know, you take Jim Plunkett, he has to be rusty because he hasn't played in a year. And I talked to him yesterday and he said, you know, the one thing I have going for me, I'm healthy. I'm not beat up. He said, I feel good. I feel strong. But the other thing that he didn't know about is confidence. You know, can I still play? Can I still move the team? And I think this, that drive, even though they didn't get a touchdown, was probably the biggest confidence thing for this guy right here. Well, he certainly seemed very cool and very comfortable throughout that drive. 14 plays. They went 75 yards. And Chris Barr finished it off with a 22-yard field goal. And now the Giants with Phil Sims at the helm. We'll get a chance to operate on offense. The Raiders lead it 3 nothing. Bar to kick off. Mark Collins and Kenny Hill back deep for the Giants to receive Barr's kick. 3 nothing Raiders. We're in the first quarter with 7.15 left. Short kick. It is Kenny Hill. And he's got some room. Hill. Penalty marker down. Barr with a shot at him. And Barr takes him down on the far side of the field. But there's a penalty marker back at about the 25-yard line. And you know when there's a penalty marker on a kick return that it's going to go against the return team. It's usually a clip or a block from behind. And it is. And the Giants bring it back. And the officials bring it back. And the Giants play with it back. Red Cashin signals the violation. He is the referee. Holding during the run back. Number 57 of the receivers. First down at 10. Byron Hunt. Number 57. Call for the violation. Hey, that was a big play. That was a big play for the Giants and a big play for Kenny Hill. You remember Kenny Hill was drafted by the Raiders and was traded by the Raiders to the Giants. Phil Sims looking over that Raider defense. Referees say hold up just a second. Phil looks over that defense and here is the personnel. Howie Long, maybe the best player in the league on defense. Bill Piquel in the middle and Sean Jones the other end. The linebackers, Jerry Robinson, Millen, McKenzie, and Martin. The secondary, the two great cornerbacks, Hayes and Haynes and Stacy Turan and Van McElroy, the two safeties. They have a lot of faith in that defense. You know, the officials have taken time out down here in the field, Pat. I'm not sure what they're doing or talking about. My guess would be that there's something wrong with the with the scoreboard clock. Well, they did move the ball back five yards. The referee, Red Cashin, has the ball in his hand now. I don't know where he's going to put it. I think they may have lost the spot. Usually when the referee walks around with the ball in his hand, they don't know where it's supposed to be. They spotted it once. They spotted it twice. Now, this is the third time they've spotted it. I wonder if they've gotten replay help to see where the spot was. Well, they just moved it again. That's the fourth spot they've given this ball. They'll get it right. If they spot it four times, usually in one of those four, they get it right. The odds are good. <laughs> out of four. They settled on the 18. <laughs> That's a good number. First and 10 Giants from that spot. Seven minutes to go first quarter. 
Bill Sims is going right to work. Lionel Manuel is back there with Lester Hayes. Manuel number 86. Here is the giant offense. Sims the quarterback. Joe Morris and Maurice Carthon the runners. Bobby Johnson was supposed to start. Stacy Robinson took his place. Lionel Manuel, at whom the first pass was aimed, the other wide receiver. Up front, it's Bensonard, Oates, Godfrey, Nelson, and the NFL's leading receiver going into this game, Mark Bavaro at tight end. Second and ten. Manuel in motion. And off Mars. Joe Mars. Got over a thousand last year. Is hammered down by Bill Fickell after a gain of two. That's an interesting matchup there. Bill Fickell playing the nose tackle against Bart Oates. Again, you get back to those nose tackles. You know, those are the guys that if you're going to try and run between the tackles, you have to get the nose tackle blocked. They didn't get Fickell blocked. He took on the tackle, boom, right down the line of scrimmage, made the play on Joe Morris. Third and eight. Casey Robinson split wide to the left. Manuel in the air. A penalty marker is down. I think that whistle blew, Pat, before the ball was snapped. No play. Number 60. False start on the offense. Five yards and still third down. That's Brad Benson. You know, an interesting thing, Brad Benson's a left tackle. He had to block Howie Long. And I'll bet you, I don't know if they have a stat for this, but I'll bet you Howie Long draws more penalties than anyone in the NFL. I think of all the defensive players in the NFL, he's the most dominant player. And he gets holding penalties against them, offsides. Everyone is conscious of blocking that guy. Brad Benson just wanted to get started a little early. You need a false start <laughs> to block him. He's the official. Hey, I got to block Howard. Let me start early, man. Third and 13, Solomon Miller split wide to the left. Sims back, chased out of the pocket. Here comes Long after him. Sims throws back across the middle. A flag is down on the far side of the field, however. Tony Galbraith was that, the receiver. Now that one's going to be against the Raiders. That was Howie that left early that time. Howie didn't line up against Brad Benson. He lined up over Billy Yard, and he took off early. Phil Sims got up very gingerly. He is shaking a bit. Offsides against Howie. False start again. Two in a row. That's what they said they wanted to do. I was talking to Howie yesterday. He said he wants to get in there and flush him out. He'll go in there, not let Sims get set up, but get him there, make him get out of that pocket, get penetration. He did that, but he started a little early. Well, he flushed him out. He, he flushed him out, but he got five for the flush. There might be two penalties here. Greg Townsend was the other Raider who applied the pressure. Offside, number 75 on the defense. It'll still be third down. It'll still be third down. Sims got up slowly. Well, look what's happened to the quarterbacks in the year of 1986. Mark Wilson here. Hogaboom of the Colts is out. McMahon, separated shoulder. He's been out. Missed last week. Probably missed tomorrow night. Montana's out for maybe the year, maybe forever. Danielson of the Browns broke his leg in preseason. Dieter Brock out with knee surgery. Steve DeBerg with an elbow puncture. Danny White started today, but it was doubtful. But it's a tough year for quarterbacks. Sims out of the shotgun. Chased, and there's a penalty marker down. Back where it is, it has to be holding. And Sims scrambles for enough yardage for a first down, but I'm sure they will bring it back. You know, Bill Parcells was telling us, he said, watching guys block Howie Long, he says he makes them grab their face mask and hold them. He said, as you go to block him, he knocks their face hands mask. up. Number 60 on the offense. Still he, third down. He knocks their hands up into the face mask. And I'm not sure if Howie, I, Howie Long was the guy who, who Benson was penalized for. I think he was. But if it was, then he, he usually puts himself in that position.
bring up a third down situation. Third and 18, or third and 13 make it. Back at the 15 yard line now. Sims on the spread formation. High snap, pressure. Sims gets rid of it. Picked off. Mike Haynes with the interception. And down the sideline with blockers and out of bounds at the Giant 23. Lionel Manuel knocked him out. And the Raiders will operate in great shape. Well, the Raiders were in their pirate defense. And what happens, they usually play man-to-man. -man. I don't think Phil Sims read that because the guy he threw it to, Haynes, was just sitting back there all by himself. And I think he looks as we're going to see Haynes come back here, and as, as he throws the ball in here, he has coverage, and then he throws it over his head to Haynes. But watch what happens and what Phil Sims sees. You see, Haynes is just backing up, backing up, backing up, and he's just waiting back there. Now, he was throwing to the inside guy. Haynes was playing zone. They're usually man-to-man, -man, but they weren't on that play. Raiders operate on first down from the Giant 23. Allen straight ahead. Gets maybe one. No more. You mentioned pirate defense. What is that? Well, the pirate defense is the Raiders' five defensive backs. And they have a banded defense that's six defensive backs. Now, usually when they go into that, they play man-to-man. -man. Phil Sims was expecting man-to-man. -man. What they did, the Raiders changed it up, and they zoned it. I don't think I've ever seen them zone on a pirate. It's a big order zoning on a pirate. That's what they're talking about there. You see, they're shaking their heads at the sideline. Boy, that zone the pirate worked, huh? Second down. to about the 17, stopped by Banks. A gain of five. I'll tell you one thing, and I still say that on that first series, the giant defense let the Raider offense off the hook. I think confidence now is in this Raider offense. I think confidence is in Jim Plunkett. And I think that if the Giants are going to do anything, they're going to have to do it with their defense and take it away. The defense of the Giants isn't making anything happen. These are two of the best and most punishing defensive units, certainly. And perhaps the entire football team in the NFL. Third down. And five. Bucket. Quick drop, quick throw. Incomplete. Barksdale, I believe, was the intended receiver. Plunkett thought he was going in. Barksdale went out. Well, you know, that's one of the things that Tom Flores was talking about. He said, you know, he said, we just have young receivers. Rod Barksdale, again, who he was throwing to on that team, he said that, that, that he hasn't even played. You know, he didn't play in high school. He didn't play in college. And here's Doki Williams on the other side. He only had eight receptions in college. He's trying to get free there. He's open. Elvis Patterson, he got by Patterson. Patterson just grabbed a handful of jersey. Far from 35 yards out. He's made one from 22. Wilson holding. And he's good again. Far has been perfect this year. And the Raiders take a 6-0 lead with 317 left to play in the first quarter. Yard field goal by Chris Barr makes it six nothing Raiders and he is set to kick off. Just teeing it up. Back deep for the Giants, Kenny Hill and Mark Collins. Interception by Haynes set up the second field goal. The Raiders put together a 75 yard march to get the first field goal. So it's six nothing Los Angeles. Good kick by Barr. This time. Sam Seal down in a hurry. Sam Seal flew down there. He was the outside guy on the left, what you call the L5 man. He came all the way down the field and then all the way across the field to make that tackle. 
any time a special teams in a kickoff can make the tackle inside the 20, that's a big play for the kickoff coverage. But that guy was running about 9-2 down there. Someone stuck him in one of those cannons they have out here and shot him out of it. So the Giants start then from their own seven-yard line, first and 10, their second series. The first one ended in an interception. Draw will throw out of the end zone. Fires down the middle. Has Stacy Robinson. Outside the 20 to about the 24. Back to New York. Update from Brent Musburger. Well, Pat, the drama unfolding down in Dallas. A minute to go. David Archer is back. He wants Floyd Dixon on the left side. Dixon has contact with the defensive back. He makes the catch. He gets up and scrambles toward the end zone. He is stopped. But three plays later, Mick Luckhurst kicks a field goal. 37-35, 20 seconds to go. Back to Pat Summerall. Brent, 6 nothing here at the Coliseum. The pitch is back to Mars. Mars chased and cut down from behind by Bill Pickell. We're at the Coliseum in Los Angeles on a beautiful day, a loss of two by Morris. Pat Summerall with John Madden, the Giants and the Raiders, and the Raiders leading 6 nothing. Giants, I mean, the, the Raiders have just gone into their pirate defense again, Pat. That five defensive backs, they got the interception the last time they went on it when they went into a zone. Greg Townsend in, in the rushing unit, number 93, second and 11. Sims back to throw. Has time and overthrows his tight end, Mark Bavaro. He's been looking in that direction a lot more lately. Well, I think that's one thing that the that the Raiders are looking for too, knowing that that Bavaro is his favorite receiver, so they're going to put a lot of attention on that coverage. That'll bring up a third down situation, third and eleven. Crowd starting to chant defense. The Raiders have given them that so far. 143 left first quarter. Sims out of the spread. as if Benson jumped. It might have been Billy Ard. It was on the left side of the offensive line. I think that one was Billy Ard. Full start. Number 67 on the offense. Still third down. Watch the left guard there right next to the center. You see, again, he's starting his pass protection early. The guy that he's blocking on is Sean Jones, who's the leading sacker on the Raiders this year. He's the guy that started at the right end. He's taking Lyle Alzado's place. Alzado, of course, retired. Seems to get out of the spread. Gets it outside to Tony Dalbert. Stacy Duran herded him out of bounds. A gain of four, not nearly enough for the first down. And Sean Landetta will come on to punt. Fulton Walker, just activated by the Raiders, back deep. at about the Raider 35. 112 left to play first quarter. Raiders lead it 6 0. Flag again. And then it gets off a good punt. That was a flag before the play got underway. That'll stop it. It looked like it was against the Raiders. It looked like they jumped unless someone on the Giants moved, but in either case, it'll just be a five yard penalty and it won't be enough for a first down. So it's still going to be a punting situation. Encroachment number 59 on the defense, still fourth down. You know, these guys get up there and they're looking for anything to move. Now watch the center's head. You see, he moves. He's just moving his body. He moved his head, but didn't move the ball. And of course, they have to wait till the ball moves, but they're up there ready to go. And they're going to move on anything. So Landetta will punt this time from about his own 13-yard line. Gets off a rocket. Flags it down again. Walker goes all the way back to his own 11-yard line. Gets away from one man, two. He's not got a bounds at about the 17 by Gary Reason. But the flag is down. 60-yard punt 
by Landetta. A six yard return. So they net 54 out of that, but I think they'll bring it back. Well, the giant defense is coming on the field. Maybe they won't bring it back. Yeah, the penalty was against the Raiders. The Giants like that punt, so they're going to stay with that deal. Holding. Atlanta beat Dallas. 37-35. First down at 10. Two seconds left to play in the first quarter with the Raiders leading the Giants six to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Raiders Spanish language game broadcast. Again, the first quarter has been pretty much in charge of the Raiders. Well, you know, the Giant offense looks like it's out of sync, and I don't know if that's the Raider defense doing it or part of the Giant, but it looked like they're they're still on the airplane, you know, kind of like, like somewhere over Omaha, Nebraska or something. Well, you know, they came out on Friday to try to try to prevent that. Yeah, and they practiced yesterday at Loyola, and, uh, but they just don't look like you know they don't have any running going they don't have their passing going they've had you know a couple offsides guys have jumped early and uh, they look uh, maybe a little nervous or maybe antsy is the word whatever it is they're not into this football game yet well the Raiders are 0 2 going in look at this time of possession the Raiders have had the ball 925 the Giants 453 the Raiders have it again at their own five yard line Raiders are 0 2 John I started to say but you think about the loss to Denver and then last week to Washington they haven't played that poorly well you know like Tom Flores says yesterday he said I thought about that Denver game he said we played well offensively and the Redskin game we played well defensively he said Friday night I had all my papers out there and I was worrying he said I started thinking I said we really aren't bad so I said I took all my papers threw them in the bag and watched a movie with my wife Sometimes you do that as a coach. You have these little meetings with yourself. You know, like, are we okay or we're not okay? And you decide we're okay. Well, what the heck? Watch a movie. Sometimes I think everybody needs a, a meeting with themselves. Right now for an update, let's go to Brent Musburger back in New York. Well, Pat, here is the last play of the game down in Big D from the shotgun. Danny White has got Tony Hill. Now, the issue here is whether or not Hill could have stepped out of bounds and given Sefty in a shot. He did not. Let's go back to Pat Summerall. Cowboys lose it. Marcus Allen. Straight ahead, stopped by Jim Burke. Started from his own five, a gain of four. You know, I think this is where the Giants can do something now. They have the Raiders inside the tent. I think this is where they can put the pressure on them, not let them get a first down, force them to punt, and then start with good field position. But these guys here have to do it. Leonard Marshall has to come up with a play. Jim Burt, uh, Lawrence Taylor, one of those guys has to make something happen here. There's Leonard Marshall up close. And it takes a wide lens. Inside the 10 to about the 11, 11, a gain of three. That'll be the end of the first quarter. They'll swap into the field. And after one, it's the Raiders six on two bar field goals, the Giants nothing. To begin the second quarter, six nothing. The Raiders lead the Giants. The Raiders have the ball at their own 12 yard line. They need about three for a first down. Raiders had the ball 10 minutes and seven seconds in the first quarter. The Giants had it 453. Raiders got two field goals, six nothing, they lead. Jim Plunkett is the quarterback. Andy Parker was the movement. Plunkett back to throw. Got a man open. It's Marcus Allen. Allen out of bounds at the 46 yard line by Terry Kennard. A gain of 34 yards. I'll tell you, I know what Jim Plunkett thought when he seen that he had Marcus Allen out there and he has a man-to-man -man against the linebacker, Andy Head, in 54. That's a mismatch. He got that. When you get one of your best players on a linebacker that can't stay up with him, you know you're going to get a big play. That's what you do with a guy like Marcus Allen. You put him here, you put him in motion, you put him out, you try and create that linebacker on him all by himself. That time was Andy Hedden. 
And Marcus Allen, who plays every down, can do everything. And he's got a chance to do it again. He only got about a yard, stopped by Harry Carson. Maybe two. The word on Trey Junkin, who was injured, injured his knee, is that he will not return. He has some apparent ligament damage. His knee buckled and bent the wrong way. Well, the Raiders do carry three tight ends. Todd Christensen, of course, is a starter. Trey Junkin was playing as a second tight end, and now they have Andy Parker, who's still playing as a second tight end in place of Junkin. Parker's number 81, plunk it back to throw. Fires sidearm out intended for Marcus Allen. Elvis Patterson, the defender. Yeah, I don't think Todd Christensen has caught a ball yet, and I'll no. tell you one thing. This giant defense is really aware of him. You know, in that play, let's see if we can watch it on the chalkboard and just see see what they do to a guy like Todd Christensen. Here he is. Now watch as he comes out. How the linebacker just grabs him, holds him, rides him all the way, then says he didn't do it. Watch him here. You see him, they hit, then they grab, then they stay with him, they stay with him, and then at the end they put up their hands like they didn't do it. But that's good coverage, though. You gotta hold him up somewhere. Once he gets into the secondary, Bucket has some pressure applied, chased by Marshall, gets to Marcus Allen, but a penalty flag is down. That's going to be on the Raiders, though, I mean, on the Giants, though, Pat, because they were holding, again, Todd Christensen. The play before, they didn't see it. That time, Christensen was over on this side, and the Giants held him, and the official did see it. Holding, number 34 on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Elvis Patterson. They watch him. You see, he's up there. He's grabbing him. You see, he has the hand in there, the left hand on him, pulling everything. The time before, they didn't see it. I think they've been doing that to Todd Christensen the whole game. They caught him on that one. See, Elvis Patterson should have known what happened to play before and not done that because they were watching him because Christensen complained the play before that. But it was a linebacker the play before, so Elvis had no way to know. On first down, they get to Hawkins, and Hawkins gets down to about the giant 26. George Martin tripped him up. A gain of four. Plunkett doesn't look rusty. Oh, I tell you, and he has a real feel with those backs. I mean, so far, Marcus Allen's caught four passes for 80 yards. Jim Plunkett knows how to use everyone. I mean, he's not the type of guy who's just going to use the tight end or just a wide receiver. He really does move the ball around well. Total offense, 150 for the Raiders and only 23 for the Giants. You can't move much without the football. the ball. I'll tell you one thing I think that has helped is right here this pass protection. I think that thus far in the game the Raider offense has dominated and blocked and kept out that giant defense. You see what they did to Jim Burt? They had him there on the line, really never got off, blocked both ends. They're really, so far, they haven't gotten close to Plunkett. I think they're after going to go to a little more pressure with the linebacker. Well, that's what the Redskins did to him last week. The Redskins beat him 10 to 6. Third down and 6 now. Plunkett back. Here comes the blitz. Into the air, and the Giants come up with the interception. I think Leonard Marshall caught it in the air. Yes, he did. That's the type of thing that they had to do. They had to, they had to come. They had to get something. They had to get penetration. They had to come on a blitz. They had to bring some guys. They have to make something happen. You see, Hedden, the guy who Marcus Allen beat, is the guy who beat Marcus Allen and caused the fumble. And Marshall came up with it. Oklahoma has a devastating defense. Number two ranked Miami feels a defense-defying aerial attack. The two top teams in the nation next Saturday on CBS Sports. Back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Giants have the ball. First and ten at their own 32 after the interception by Leonard Marshall. Well, 52 left to play in the first half. Solomon Miller splits out wide to the right. Robinson is to the left. The 
get to Joe Mars. By far his best game of the day, Reggie McKenzie on the stop. You know, in that fumble, the interesting thing, Pat, watch, here's Lawrence Taylor, and he draws so much attention. Bruce Davis, the tackle, is going to block him. Taylor fakes and doesn't come. Andy Hedden comes from the outside, and no one blocks him. Now watch what happens to the tackle, Bruce David. You see, he's waiting. Now, Taylor didn't come. Now, right there, he is 79 all by himself with no one to block, and Hedden is hitting plunk at the back. Second and one. Manual in motion. Handoff is to Maurice Carson. He's got enough for the first giant first down. Stopped by McKenzie again. A gain of three. They're going into overtime at Giant Stadium in the meantime. 45-45. First down, Giants at their own 44-yard line. They trail 6-0. things that they were going to do is they were going to work on Lester Hayes with Lionel Manuel. That time they did a lot of work with him. They brought him in motion, ran him to the inside, stopped him, or ran him back to the outside. Lester shaking his head. He had it all the way. He said, I had the motion, I had the in, I had the pivot, I had the out. Lester is lighter than in past years and in good shape. He looks good. One of the rules of a defensive back as a corner, as you get older, you better get lighter. Lester has obeyed the rules. Here's Sims to Morris. Flag is down. Morris cuts left side. Gets up to midfield. A gain of six with a penalty marker down. Rod Martin on the stop. I think that's one thing that the Giants haven't established yet this season is a running game. And specifically Joe Morris. Of course, he you know, held out most of training camp and then uh, signed just before the first regular season game. And I think that may be one of the reasons that this offense is still a little out of sync. I think Joe Morris is a little out of sync. Well, Bill Parcells was saying to us yesterday. Neutral zone, number 99 on the defense, still second down. Sean Jones started to say Bill Parcells was saying for the first time this week, late this week, in practice, Morris has started to look like he did last year. Well, you know, that's one of the things that a back has to have his offensive line and quarterback and stuff to work with, and the offensive line has to have that back to work with. Second and five, nine penalties already in this contest. Sims to Morris. Morris cuts back over the left side. Should be enough for a first down. A gain of six into Raider territory to about their 45. McKenzie again on the stop. You know, isn't it something else? Success breeds success. You could see the Raiders had things going, and then they, then the Giants come on a blitz with head, and they get the ball back, and now they're getting the momentum. They're getting a little running going. Once you get that going, it's a lot easier to pass. 10.50 left in the first half. The Giants now are the ones who are chewing up the clock. First and 10. Back of the head by Van McElroy. Rod Martin was up there first. A pickup of three, make it second and seven, and a passing down. Van McElroy is one of those guys that'll come up and pound you in different places. I tell you, he is a he is a tough guy. They have to control him in practice. He has a hard time even in practice not hitting his own guys. They lost him to injury late last year, and when that happened, they lost a big package. You have to have someone back there who's going to tackle because he helps on the runs and press. You don't get big plays against the good safety. Sims back on second down, throws outside incomplete. Flag is down. Mark Bavaro, the intended receiver. Jerry Robinson was the defender, and that was a takedown. That I think, should be a first I think down. Jerry Robinson tackled Mark Bavaro before the ball got there. You know, it's interesting. I don't know that either Bavaro or pass Christensen first, have caught a pass yet. They have not. Defense, first down. You know, and of course, they're the, they're the big two receivers on the team. Watch Robinson here. The ball's in the air, and he, he has his tackle all done before it gets there. 
That's not allowed. Don't need a replay for that one, do we? Nope. First down, Giants again, Morris. Ali Roussan, not Morris. Morris has gotten a rest. Reggie McKenzie again on the tackle for the Raiders. A gain of five for Roussan. Here comes Morris back in now. And out goes Jeff Hostetler, who had been in the game as a wide receiver. Now, those are two areas that the that the Giants are a little light, and that is one is running back, and the second is wide receiver. With Bobby Johnson hurt, they only have three wide receivers. They only have two halfbacks anyway. Sims back to throw. Raiders on a blitz, but they get it down the middle to Mark Bavaro. And Bavaro is tough to get down, get down, and gets down finally at the 15. Turan and Van McElroy, a pickup of 20. Well, Stacy Turan knows about Mike Mark Bavaro. Watch number 30 is playing man to man on number 89. They were teammates at Notre Dame. So Turan knows that when you get Bavaro, you better hold on and hope you get some help. It's going to take a couple of them to get that guy down. I've never seen tacklers bounce off a receiver as much as I've seen off this guy. This guy leads the league in tacklers that have bounced off his body. If they ever keep that stat, I'm sure he will. Manuel goes in motion. Sims goes back to throw. Fires incomplete. Lester Hayes, the defender. Stacy Robinson was the intended receiver. This was one of the game plan, one, one of the parts of the game plan of the Raiders is they thought they could work on Lester Hayes and were going to try to. Now, I think that the closer you get to the goal line, the tougher it is. I think you can work on Lester, but I think you need a little more room than 15 yards. Sims is three out of eight. The Raiders lead 6-0, but the Giants are at the Raider 14-yard line with 8.20 left in the first quarter. NFL update then. Let's go back again to Brent Musburger in New York. Pat and John overtime. Jets win the toss. They receive. Ken O'Brien pulls out. He's already thrown three times to Wesley Walker. Here he goes for number four. 65, 50, 20, and 43 yards. The Jets win in overtime over the Dolphins. A controversy will update at a halftime. Back to Pat Summerall. That must have been some contest, that one. Thank you. Ball spent a lot of time in the air. I'll tell you. I know Marino has thrown five touchdowns. Third down. Sims back to throw. Has a man around his ankle. It's Greg Townsend. And down he goes. Howie Long was the second man to arrive on the scene. That was a heck of an effort by Townsend. Greg Townsend is going to come from the outside. He goes around Carl Nelson right at the top of the screen. Then he's going to come back in, and he just keeps working and working, and he gets Phil Sims' right leg, and Howie Long comes to help him. Greg Townsend is the like the designated pass rusher of the Raiders' defense. Real good speed. 39 yards out for Joe Cooper with Jeff Rutledge holding. To the new addition of the giant kicking game. And no good. Wide left. So the Raider lead holds. With 7.09 left to play in the first half, it's still 6 0 Los Angeles. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Michelob Light, super premium taste, and less filling beer. Toyota, builder of tough, powerful, reliable trucks, Toyota. And by Sears, celebrate Sears' new century and enjoy all the ways we've changed and all the ways we haven't. Six nothing over the Giants. We're in the second quarter with 7:09 left to play in the first half. There is what happens when you miss from 39 yards out. Your head hurts, especially when you're a new kicker. It's only your second week with the club, and they just cut two other kickers this week: Ali Haji Sheikh and Bob Thomas. 
first down Raiders at their own 22. They lead it 6 nothing. Doki Williams was the man in motion and Plunkett goes to work. Intended for Rod Barksdale. John Madden was saying before about the disadvantage of these two young receivers Barksdale and Doki Williams. But they say that Doki uh, that uh, Barksdale is among the best athletes they've ever had here and he has a pretty good tutor in Cliff Branch. Well you know he was a he was a track man and Cliff Branch was a track man so they I, I think they understand that part of it. They both had great speed and when Cliff first came to the Raiders that's all he could do is run fast and he didn't know how to run patterns and make cuts and he had to learn it. He learned it from Fred Blitnikoff and now he in turn is teaching it to Rod Barksdale. Hopkins moves in motion. It's back to Marcus Allen and he is back inside the 20 to about the 18 stopped by Carl Banks. A loss of five. distribution up until today for the Raiders the running backs that would be Allen and Hawkins principally caught 21 passes the tight end that would be Christensen 13 and then the two young wide receivers caught only six and that's so. one thing that you don't want to continue because you know that that shrinks down the field that the opponents have to defend so I know they want to get the ball to the wide receivers well, that's always been been able to do it. that's always been the Raider reputation let's get it up the field and Allen get up the field. Elvis Patterson made the stop. Pat Summerall and John Madden, we're at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the home of the Raiders. They lead 6-0. And we have 6.05 left to play in the first half. One of the Giants, excuse me, John, one of the Giant players, I didn't see who, was shaken up on that last play, but apparently everything is okay. He made it to the sideline. Ray Guy, almost a legend. Number eight, back to punt. And Lionel Manuel, back to return the punts. Number 86, that's a little something new. Guy standing at the one. Manuel at the 48. One yard return, and that's all. The Raiders down in good shape and a scuffle. Which will stop in a hurry, or maybe not. Kenny Hill, the X Raider, and they've got him down and surrounded. And look out. 36 yard punt by Guy. They returned it one yard, so the Raiders, the Giants, will take over. It was 525 left. First half. It is six nothing. The Raiders over the Giants with 5:25 left to play in the first half. Carl Banks was the Giant who was shaken up on the last play before the Ray Guy punt, and they've been checking him out. They've checked everything, John. Yeah, they started and they checked his head, and then they checked his shoulders and his arms and his legs, and then they had him try and walk a straight line. And I think it must be something with the head, you know, that they're checking the balance to see that he's, he's okay. First down, just at midfield. Raiders lead six nothing. Sims takes to Morris, looks deep. De Bavaro's got a lot of room. Hammered out of bounds by Lyndon King. But a gain of 19. I think now the giant offense is coming this second quarter and they're taking control of things. They, they have good pass protection. The, the Raiders are in a four man rush. But watch the pass protection here. They're doing a good job on the left side. You see the center there. Oates, he takes down Howie Long around the neck. But they're keeping those guys off of Phil Sims. First down, Giants. There's the Raider 31. And on the move. Manual in motion. Carthen reverse coming to Hostetler. Now he's going to throw it. He is the quarterback, of course. Now he gets to the outside. Still running. Finally gets down to about the 30. After all that scrambling, he might have picked up a yard before Stacy Toran took him down. I'll tell you, the Raiders didn't go for this fake. What we're going to see is a reverse. See, he hands the ball off, then another step, hand it. Now, who, he's going to try and throw, but the Raiders had double coverage on the receiver down here. He had no one open, so he had to try and rush and just run around there and get as much as he can. But Hostetler was going to throw the ball deep into double coverage, and he didn't. 
Second and nine. Bavaro at the left end of the giant line moved before the ball was snapped. And they'll mark off five. Ball starts. Number 89 on the offense. Still second down. That was Bavaro, and he jumped offside. He was going against his old college teammate at Notre Dame, Stacy Turan. That's an interesting matchup. I bet they don't talk to each other because Bavaro is one of those guys that doesn't talk. To anybody. To anyone. Even in a locker room, he just sits in a locker and just stares right in, into his locker, into the stall. In the opposite direction from everybody else. Yeah. 4 16, 4 14 left to play in the first half. Sims has time. Intended for Bavaro, covered by his old teammate, Stacy Turan. Stacy Turan was probably telling the defensive coaches, he said, I know Bavaro, let me just get him. Here they are right here. Here's the pass protection. You see, this is the difference. In the first quarter, they were getting close to Sim, and they were kind of nicking at him and getting close. Now, in the second quarter, this giant offensive line has taken over, and they're handling the Raider defensive line now. Third and 14. Sims will operate from the spread formation. That means that Galbraith is to his left. He has time. He had a possible pass completion to Lionel Manuel. Sam Seal was the cover man. It's incomplete, and I think they're out of field goal range. Lambetta comes onto the field. Well, they had to get that one more pass completion to get in the field goal range. That's a 35. It would be a 52-yard field goal from here. I think they probably needed another 5 to 10 yards for Cooper's range. The word on Carl Banks, by the way, is that he suffered nerve damage in his leg, and that's why they were giving him all those tests that you were talking about. Fulton Walker. Landetta aims for the sideline. Into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. Landetta was almost successful. Punt of 35 yards, but they'll bring it back to the 20, and the Raiders will take over at 351 left to play in the first half. Tonight, Oklahoma has a devastating defense. Number two ranked Miami feels a defense-defying aerial attack. The two top teams in the nation next Saturday on CBS Sports. You know, I think that the Giants should have had that ball before it went into the end zone. Watch Elvis Patterson for some reason, instead of kicking it, getting on the ball and keeping it from going in the end zone, he was worried about those blockers, and he got all spun around. But that was a pretty good punt by Lindetta. I don't think he ever knew where the ball was. Well, he forgot that he was on the coverage team and thought he was on the return team. That's Marcus Allen over the left side. And the whole pack moves up for about four yards before Jim Burt's on the bottom. They give him five. Three and a half minutes left to play in the first half with the Raiders on two field goals by Chris Barr. Who lead it six to nothing. Atlanta over Dallas and Tampa Bay over Detroit. Rams beat Indianapolis 24 to seven. All those are finals, as is that one. Buffalo's victory over St. Louis. Denver over the Eagles. Big second and five. Bump back to throw. Chase. Or Christensen incomplete. Covered by Terry Kennard. The Vikings overwhelm the Steelers. Seattle beat New England. That's final also. And in overtime, the Jets 51-45 over Miami. The Saints. 10-10 with the 49ers, and San Diego leading Washington 21-10 in the second quarter down in San Diego. Kansas City 10-0 over Houston in the second. Third down and five situation coming up for Jim Plunkett and the Raiders. As Lawrence Taylor gets set to play the big D. The one thing about having a Marcus Allen, you can run an Allen on a third and five situation and get a first down. Comes out of the backfield. This time, so does Bucket. Almost picked off by Elvis Patterson. The intended.
receiver was Marcus Allen, and Ray Guy comes on. That's the other thing you can do is pass to a Marcus Allen on that third and five, and the third thing you can do is throw an interception to Marcus Allen on third and five. Had Patterson caught that ball, that could have been a touchdown because he was going one way, everyone else was going the other way. He would have taken that in the end zone. Now he was going full tilt. Ray Guy stand back, stands back at his own 10-yard line. Lionel Manuel is back deep for the Giants. catch the punt but he got a good Raider bounce 249 left first half six nothing Raiders it's gonna be a long time before you see a college contest of that magnitude number one Oklahoma against number two Miami led by Benny Testaverde and Oklahoma of course uh, they've got a mammoth squad and some outstanding players as well I think when you see Brian Bosworth here, uh, Oklahoma's great linebacker, you have to realize that a guy, you know, puts 44, his number in his head, with earrings and a haircut, like, you have to be good. I mean, you can't walk the streets like that and be an average guy. You better be good. Oklahoma's offensive line is bigger than the Chicago Bears. That wins a lot of games. They, they won 63 to nothing yesterday. Right. A bunch of points. This is Joe Morris taken down from behind. Sean Jones, number 99, loss of three. The Giants' first four possessions, they got it at their own 18. Sims threw an interception. They got it at their own seven. They had the punt. They missed the field goal, then they had the punt again. This is possession number five. 219 left to play in the first half. Six-nothing Raiders. Townsend got there first. It was an interesting thing. I don't think the Giants have seen that. The Raiders overloaded their defense, their defensive line. Watch right here. They got their four defensive linemen all on this side of the center. They come on a stun here. They get the big push. They overload that side and get the big push on Sim. Watch from the center on, all four of the defensive linemen were on the left side. And look at the surge and the push that they get on Sims with that pass rush. Two-minute warning will be given to both Bill Parcells and Tom Flores. Raiders still lead it 6 nothing. 6 nothing. the Raiders over the Giants with two minutes left in the first half. Giants had the ball third and very, very long. That's when you hear from Howie Long. They need 24 for the first half. Tony Galbraith, and he gets out outside the 20, maybe 21. Jerry Robinson tripped him up, but Landetta will come on to punt. And the Raiders have taken a timeout to stop the clock. So they've already had the two-minute time warning, so what they're trying to do is take the timeout, and then, then they'll get another timeout at change of possession. What they did is the Raiders had their, their pass rush in there. You see those guys? They started going to rush the passer, and then the Giants were trying to counter and, you know, and sneak a run in there to get in some position. Landetta has punted twice. Fulton Walker back. For the Raiders. She had that great spectacular although brief career as a kick returner with Miami 153 left as the Raiders take that time out Landetta is number five you know the Raiders have been in this position a lot of times where they have you know 153 it doesn't seem like much time but the clock will stop here at change of possession and they have two more timeouts minute 53 seconds that's a lot of time no 
flags. Good kick by Landetta. Chases Walker all the way back to his 31. Fires down in a hurry. Walker gets back to about the 36. Struggles out to that point before Andy Hedden knocked him down. A punt of 48 yards by Landetta. A return of four by Walker. I'll tell you, that was a big punt by Sean Landetta. And the Giants were backed up. They needed good field position. Their punter got it for him on that one. The Raiders will take over with Jim Plunkett at the helm. And here's Landetta. Raiders will start from their own 36 with a minute and 41 seconds left. Landetta has that single barred face mask here. He's not, that's not a bar for action, is it? No. Nope. Stales a man in motion. Bucket. Semi roll right. Incomplete. Doki Williams, I believe, was the intended receiver. Well, the Raiders on that play, Pat, really flooded the zone. The Giants are primarily a zone defense, but the Raiders had four receivers in the same vicinity. I don't know which one Plunkett threw. He kind of threw into the middle of all four. Going to take your pick. I don't know who was attended for. Plunkett, seven out of 16. Well, he had a good start, and then he's kind of slowed down a little. Really? He has his team in front, however, six nothing. Two field goals by far. Plunkett back to throw again. Going for the punch. Almost for Barksdale. Dale with a great speed. That's the thing, you know, and the guy that he's running against there, Perry Williams, also has great speed. So you get two sprinters going against each other. Barksdale not only outruns Williams, but also gets behind Kennard. And that ball was about as perfectly thrown as you get. That was right in his hands. That was that was no thing. Watch him. Plunkett sees that. He's trying to give it English now to get there, get there, get there. It got there, but Barksdale didn't do his part of it hurt his shoulder again with that much English. <laughs> Come on, get in there, get in there. Oh, my shoulder popped out. Back again. Throws it over the head of Hawkins. Elvis Patterson over on the coverage again. And Ray Guy will make another appearance with a minute 22 left first half. Right, and now the Giants get the ball back. They have three timeouts, so they have plenty of time to do something. The you know, one thing about Barksdale, one thing that bothers me is when you run fast, your eyes bounce up and down. And sometimes it's tough to, to adjust to that, that long pass. It takes time to learn how to do that, to run fast and not bounce your eyes. I never learned that. Either running fast or bouncing eyes. Manual signals fair catch at his own 21. I never had that problem either, but Cliff Branch had that problem. Yeah, you know, where he'd run so fast he couldn't see something. <laughs> Six nothing with a minute 14 left in the first half. The Giants take over. Coming up at the halftime, we'll go back to our New York studios for all the scores and highlights with Brent, Jimmy the Greek, and Ken Snabler. And Irv Cross will be here at the Coliseum with a live on the field report and a look at the first half. The Greeks, by the way, will be analyzing that uh, magnificent matchup between Oklahoma, rank number one, and Miami, rank number two. Heisman Trophy candidates all over the place in that one. Sims will operate from his own 21 out of a spread formation. The Raiders will try to put the heat on. Gets it outside to Tony Galbraith. Galbraith gets out to about the 29 for a pickup of eight. Jeff Barnes tripped him. Clock running, one minute left, first half. Sims in a hurry on second and two. Lionel Manuel makes the reception over the middle. Gets out to the 47, first down Giants. Now they take their first time out. They have two left. I'll say this about the Giants. I think in the first quarter, offensively, they were unsettled. 
I think in the second quarter, they settled down, although they still haven't scored. But one thing that I can see here in the second quarter, the giant offensive line has taken over, and they're doing a good job against this Raider defensive line. Interesting thing happened on the first down. Brad Benson was blocking the cut Howie Long. Meaning he went below his knees, right? And he got him. And, he, you know, Howie Long was up there, and he was ready to get a big pass rush, and Brad Benson just cut him down. That was a play before this one, and then he came back and blocked him like this on the second one. So you can see that Sims, they know that they're going to pass, but Sims is still getting time. That's the toughest pass protection you have to do. Howie Long does something that no one else in the NFL, certainly not now, but maybe has never done in the history of the game. Look at all the different positions he plays. You know, that's the thing that he does. You see that he lines up up and down. Here was the first down play. You see, Brad Benson cut him, and that gives him something to think about. And he can pass protect him. They're doing a pretty good job on Howard. Defensive linemen hate that. To be cut like that. Tony Galbraith this time by Jerry Robinson. And again, the Giants take a timeout. Now they have one left. We have 36 seconds left to play in the first half. Bill Parcells. Would you say, John, that uh, he would he would be a what they call a player's coach? I think he's a player's coach. I think he's hot now. You see, he got a little of the sweat going up there in the brow, a little of the uh, the gum chewing. He was arguing with someone over there about a play. I think that he feels that, you know, we're getting a feeling for this game, and we're only down by six. We're going to be able to go in and adjust by halftime. I think he feels confident that they're going to come out and do a lot better in the second half. There is his new place kicker, Joe Cooper, who has one more year to go to get his law degree. He is the fifth giant kicker in the last 17 games. You know, he's not really a rookie. He did uh, kick for the Houston Oilers last year. And so he's been in a league and he's kicked in games. He kicked the first time for the Giants last week. I've never seen a, a team that had so much trouble getting a kicker seem to get hurt. In the last 17 games, they had Ali Hajishi, Jess Atkinson, Eric Schubert, Bob Thomas, the ex-Bear, Joe Cooper now. Five in the last 17 games. They haven't considered bringing you out or dusting you off and putting you out there, have they? I don't think they got a big enough uh, brush to dust me off. Sims gets it to Lionel Manuel. James Davis on the coverage. Hey, that's a big play there for the Giants. That puts them to the 40. You see, they're going to need one more completion, and they'll be in a shot for a field goal. You see, again, here's that pirate defense, and it's a man-to-man -man defense, and then Manuel does a good job. He works up, then he comes like he's coming in on James Davis, then he works back out to the sideline. 30 seconds left first half. Raiders 6, Giants nothing. for Manuel again. Manuel pulled up. Sims didn't know he was going to do that. I'll tell you, one thing these Giants have done is a real good job of Howie Long. Watch him now. Benson here is an old veteran. He's been messing with him. He's been cutting him. He's doing all this. And I think he really has Howie Long frustrated. You see, he starts to rush. He cut him. He just stood there. He didn't know what to do. Well, he saw Billy Ard waiting after he got by Benson. And Galbraith was also there. And Howie Long has only had one tackle in this first half. Three wide receivers on the right side. Look for the Hail Mary. Sims is going to come out of the pocket and now lofts it down the middle. Intended for Bobby Johnson. Went over his head. I don't know that Sims needs that one. I think with a ball on the 40-yard line, he only needs 10 or 15 yards to get in field goal position. I always figure when on the 40, the first thing you do is get in field goal position, then you go for the touchdown. But you don't go for the big one from here. 18 seconds left. The Giants still have that one timeout remaining. The Raiders have two. Sims will operate this time from about 
about six yards behind the center. Hard Oaks will do the snapping. Out of the pocket. This is Greg Townsend again. That's the third time that Sims has been sacked. Townsend doing an excellent job. That's the second one by Townsend. He's a speed rusher. He's working over in the left end. He's working against Carl Nelson, who's probably the best pass protector on the Giants team. But that's the second time that he's beaten Nelson. The Giants take another timeout. That's their last one in the first half. We can see Townsend up there on the left-hand side of the screen. You see what he did? He started up the field on Nelson, and then he clubbed him with his right hand and went inside. And when he did, he was right in front of Phil Sims. Four seconds remaining as the Giants burn that timeout. Pat Hoxson over talking in the red shirt. Talking with Bill Parcells. Giants out of timeouts. The Raiders have two. Four seconds is all that remains on the clock. Now I think they have to go for that desperation pass because they can't afford to complete a pass and then get another play. They only have one more play. But I'm sure what they talked about over there is what the heck, we may as well throw it up in the end zone, see if we can get something here. Throw it up in the air and bat it around and hope one of our guys comes down with it. Or, or, that, the, uh, or that the Raiders get a penalty on the play. Lester Hayes. Look at Lester Hayes. He's playing deep in it. Lester Hayes is all the way back by the goal line. He's right on the goal line. He's not going to let him score. They're not going to get behind him. Here's what they're doing. Lester's back there. And they, oh, it almost, they almost came up with it. Stacy Robinson almost got the rebound. That was close. That's throwing it into coverage. Lester Hayes lined up on defense right on the goal line, and that's where they threw it. He must have been in the huddle. Look, here's where he lined up. He lined up there. Then he comes up. He comes up. Now, Lester, stay back there. Get back. Okay, I'll go back. I'll go back. Don't let him score. He almost got it. I'll tell you, that's throwing into coverage. The guy was down there, and they threw it right where he was. So that's the end of the first half. And the score is the Los Angeles Raiders 6 and the New York Giants nothing. Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. And by United Airlines, you're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Back in New York with Kenny Stabler and Jimmy the Greek, we need an adding machine. Take a look at what the Miami Dolphins and the New York Jets did. 926 passing yards, 10 touchdown passes in that game. Dan Marino, career high. He chucked six TD passes against the Jets. Watch Ken O'Brien go to Mickey Shuler. Little hitch play here. Come on, Johnny Hector. And he gets down to the Miami 34-yard line. Now, O'Brien and Wesley Walker had a huge afternoon, but this was their biggest play of the game. All the Dolphins have to do to win it is keep Walker out of the end zone and they do not. They go into overtime and here is the moment of high controversy. The Jets win the coin flip. Here comes the return. It appears clear from this replay that the ball was coughed up before he hit the carpet over in the Meadowlands. The officials though say no. No fumble. Jets ball. And a short time later O'Brien struck. Fourth touchdown pass of the game to Wesley Walker. 51 to 45. Now we did not play with time in this replay by NBC. We want to show you exactly how different Difficult it is for a replay official. Here is the end zone angle. He comes up and the ball is knocked loose. Now, folks, they got to dissolve out because the Jets off a kickoff are ready to go right now. And so I would think, Kenny Stabler, that there's an awful lot of a pressure on those officials upstairs to make a quicker call. Given that amount of time, it'd be an awfully, awfully uh, tough call. Uh, maybe the quarterbacks are schooled to hurry things up in that situation. You know, Jimmy, we saw Monday night and the Broncos didn't get a touchdown that they should have. This thing has opened up a big can of Worms. Well, you said that that's what was going to happen. Why don't you continue with it? I mean, keep knocking it like you had. <laughs> well, yeah, but basically, I'm in favor of it, but they got to get some guys up there to push the buzzer they and make, make the call. The decision needs to be made much, much quicker. No. Listen, he made a great statement. Nobody realized how many bad play calls there were. <laughs> <laughs> to the scoreboard, and let's get you up to date right now. 
Washington and San Diego, 21-10, charges with the lead at the half. San Francisco and New Orleans. Bobby Aber out with a fractured foot. And Dave Wilson now quarterbacking the Saints, 13-10, the Niners with the lead. Kansas City and Houston in that game. The Chiefs shutting them out, 13-0 at the half. And, of course, the Raiders and the Giants, 6-0. What a second half that's going to be. we got more coming your way right after these messages from your local stations. <laughs> in New York with Kenny Staler and a beaming Jimmy the Greek. He came back from Atlanta. Greek, I didn't believe you. The Falcons, they played their hearts out down in Dallas today. There's only one problem with the Atlanta schedule, Brett. They have to play nine people, nine of the teams that were in the playoffs last year. All right, well, Jimmy, let's show everybody the videotape and get them up to date. It was such dramatic fashion that the Falcons were able to come back in the intense heat of Texas Stadium. Danny White to Mike Sherrard, his top draft choice out of UCLA, and the Cowboys opened up a 35 27 lead. Then with time running out, Ken Stabler, what about this desperation pass by David Archer? I tell you what, he's looking for the guy down the field. If you'll see at the end here, there's contact, but it took great concentration for him to come up with the ball, which he does right there. And that was Floyd Dixon, who almost scored, was brought down, and then Mick Luckhurst kicked an 18-yard field goal. Now, last play of the game, Kenny. What about this pass to Tony Hill? Could he have stepped out of bounds and set up a field goal? Well, he had some running room here, as you'll see. Once he catches the ball across the middle right here, he has some running room. And, you know, an athlete thinks that he can win the game right here. He's not thinking about getting out of bounds. Right here, he thinks he can probably score, but he should have probably gotten out of bounds. Jimmy, do you think there would have been one out? second left if he'd have stepped out? And something might have pulled it out. Boy, that was a dramatic game. We had other ones. And, uh, hey, Greek smile again. You said Seattle would come east. I'll tell you what an afternoon he had. 38-31. The Seahawks scored 17 points in the fourth quarter. Now, Tony Eason had a big afternoon for the Patriots. Here he is going to Stanley Morgan. 44-yard touchdown. And it was 24-14. The Patriots led by 10. That was Morgan's 50th touchdown pass. What about this blocked punt against Rich Camarillo? Well, they helped, uh, they helped Seattle an awful lot. That's the second punt that he had blocked today. And then it was David Craig with the winning play on this bomb to Ray Butler. What about Craig as a quarterback? Well, a couple of years ago, he had a terrific year and took him into the playoffs. And I think it's the key. They're going to play good defense. I think the key is that Warner stay healthy and that Craig plays well. Jimmy? I know, but if you go up the middle and pressure him real well, he's not a great quarterback. Spoken like a defensive coordinator. <laughs> Tampa Bay and Detroit today. And the Buccaneers have lost 19 in a row on the road. What about Steve Young? I think this is when he's the most dangerous, Brent. It's when he gets outside and uses his running ability like he does right here. He's not a real pure passer. All right, and the Detroit Lions lose in the Silver Dome by four. Minnesota and Pittsburgh. Hey, keep an eye on the Vikings. Jerry Burns doing a pretty good job. 31-7. I know the Steelers aren't much, but the Vikes are 2-1 now. How about the Denver Broncos? All over Buddy Ryan's defense. 33-7. John Elway had a tackle eligible play for a touchdown in that game. Buffalo and St. Louis and the talented Jim Kelly gets into the W column. 17-10 over the St. Louis Cardinals was the final score in Buffalo there. And the Los Angeles Rams over Indianapolis. 24-7. And Eric Dickerson was able to score one touchdown for the Rams in that game. And what do we think, man? He's the best running back in pro football? I think he's dynamite player. If they can get a little help from Bartkowski to take some pressure off of him, when they get ahead, they can control the game with him. Now, this was early on when the Colts were still in the game and a deflected pass thrown by Jack Trudeau and Jerry Gray coming away with the interception, and that set up a rally by the Rams. And, Jimmy, your observation about the Rams was that early on they were fairly lucky, and now they believe in themselves. There's no question about it. But the thing about the Rams is they're deep. Their defense is excellent indeed, Jimmy. Now, Irv Cross is standing by live out in the Coliseum, and Irv, I'll tell you, the kicking game continues to bother the Giants. Well, no doubt about it, Brent. Of course, uh, young Joe Cooper is the fifth kicker they've had in 17 games. The Raiders came up with two field goals for the 6 nothing score, but, you know, Cooper's an interesting story. He missed a 39-yard attempt earlier in the game, and he's a, a guy who came to the Giants unexpectedly. Last Friday, he was on his way to court. He's a law student in California. Here's a miss right here, but he's on his way to court and received a call by the Giants and it was told you have one hour to get to the airport to get to New York. He arrived in New York at 12.30 in the morning. The next day on Saturday, kick
Mike signed the contract and helped kick the Giants a victory last week. Today, of course, he's here still kicking, trying to make this roster. He told me this morning, he said, Irv, you know, you know the life of a kicker. I'm here. I haven't made this roster yet. I'm living in an apartment in the New York area where I'm renting the apartment on a week-to-week -week basis. I hope I have a chance today to come up with a big one. He had a chance, missed his first opportunity. Let's go up to another old giant kicker, Pat Summerall. Thank you, Irv. I like former much better. I never had an apartment. I did it night to night. John, for two teams that felt that they were going to take deep shots at each other, both offenses have been rather conservative. I suppose it's a tribute to the defense. I think, you know, you can say it that way. You know, I mean, it's the old thing. Are we watching a boring game or a defensive struggle? And uh, the defense has had a lot to do with it. But the offenses haven't done much. I mean, they haven't been able to run either team. And, you know, there's two great running backs and Joe Morris and Marcus Allen, but they haven't done anything. And I don't think they've tried or gotten the ball enough to the wide receivers. The Raiders, the wide receivers have yet to catch a pass in the first half. The Giants have caught three, so I think who can ever can get some running going or get the ball to their wide receivers in the second half is going to win this game. John, the Raiders lead it six to nothing, but the last play of the first half when the Giants had the ball, it's one of those things where you throw something against the wall and you hope some of it sticks to the wall, and that's what the Giants took a gamble. And it could have stuck. You watch all the Raiders go up there. Now watch this ball when it's going to bounce out. You see the ball out there? Now watch Stacy Robinson. It's bouncing right to him, and he lets it dribble right down to his feet. I'll tell you, that is as close as a touchdown that the Giants came in that first half. Lester Hayes was all the way back by the inline, and still they almost completed it. CBS Sports coverage of the NFL will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mitsubishi Motors. Experience the sensation of the all-new trucks from Mitsubishi. Quaker State. The big Q stands for quality. Always has, always will. And by GTE. G. No, GTE. Six-nothing. The Raiders lead the Giants. Pat Summerall with John Madden at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Let's have a look at some of the first half statistics. I think somewhere in the second half, one of these guys have to come up, either Joe Morris or Marcus Allen in the running game. You see, Morris only has 17 yards for 2.4. Marcus Allen only has 22 yards for 1.8 in the first half. And obviously, that's not Morris and Allen. Then I think the other thing, I think they have to complete some passes to the wide receiver. Look at the Giants. They've tried. They've tried 11 times, but they've only completed three. They also had three to the running backs and only two to the tight end. And if you look at the Raiders, you see they haven't completed a pass yet to a wide receiver. And I'll tell you, that shrinks the field on you. It really does. It doesn't sound like the Raiders, and it makes it difficult. You might control the ball, but you don't get that many points. That's why we're at 6 nothing. Well, you know, and as you do that, then they can start putting their double coverage on a guy like Todd Christensen and on a back like Marcus Allen, and things just tighten and tighten and tighten on you. Bar to kick off. Martin Collins and Kenny Hill back deep, and it's Kenny Hill. He is cut down at about the 18-yard line. Steve Strahan. Backup running back brought him down after a four-yard return. And so the Giants will take over at their own 18. The first series of quarter number three, and the Raiders lead it 6-0. Giants are 1-1. One one. Raiders 0-2, oh and, and they haven't been in that situation since Tom Flores was their quarterback back in 1964. Al Davis was the coach. on first down and down he goes by Bill Pickell. Four sacks by the Raiders and Sims is down. Back I don't know what happened to the right guard on that play. It looked like Pickell lined up over the center and went to his left. Well, you hate to start the, you know, the second half that way, but watch, watch what happened. Pickell just, oh, he just goes right around Bart Oates and Godfrey, Chris Godfrey, the right guard, got there a little late. He just split the two of them. Godfrey was stepping out, and then when he came back in, Pakel was by him. Both teams felt they had to pressure the quarterbacks. The Raiders had four sacks. The Giants have one. Second and 18 since back again. Has time this time and gets it to his tight end, Mark Bavaro. Now 
to about the 20 yard line. He's pushed back from there. And it takes several to push him back. To see how strong that Bavaro is, though, you know, there was one guy on him. He couldn't do it. Then there was a second guy there, then a third guy. And finally, the fourth guy, Van McElroy, came in and, and delivered the final touch. Watch him. I mean, he's a strong guy. Watch. There's Matt Millen. Nothing happens. Here comes the second linebacker. He's still going. There's the third guy. He's still going. And then McElroy comes in and gets that pile going backwards. Took a while to get it done. Third and seven. Manual in motion. Sits back the shotgun. Back to throw. And does throw. Has Lionel Manuel, the motion man. And that should be enough for a giant first down. He's stopped by Sam Seal, a gain of ten. I like that in the passing game. I mean, you're third and seven, and I see so many times they get third down, and they complete a four-yard pass, and then they have to have to go ahead and punt. But here they had the third and seven. They complete an eight-yard pass. Now they got a first down. Get it up the field. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Especially on third down. There's no use of leaving it short. You've got to punt. Hand off Morris. yardage this time. A pickup of seven. Reggie McKenzie on the stop. McElroy with an assist. That's what I think they have to do. I mean, I think they have to mix it up, and but they do have to get some running game going. Now, you know, they've done a couple things here in the second thing that we talked about. They got Joe Morris going on that run. They hit a wide receiver, manual for a first down, and these are the things that they weren't doing in the first half. Second and three. Stacy Turan, the strong safety, hurled backwards. The ball came loose. Turan came up with it, but it was down. The Raiders have always been impressed with Stacy Turan because he's a tough guy. You know, he has good speed. He's a good hitter. He was playing behind Mike Davis, who was a starting strong safety, and Mike Davis injured his knee, and, and Turan is a starter. But he played a lot, even when he wasn't started. He was a good special teams player, and he played in the pirate defense. Third down now. They need four. Sims has to hurry. I don't think he got enough for the first down. It's going to be close. Well, there's one that you don't like to see. They need third, third and three, and you can't run a two-and-a-half-yard pattern. Third and three, you have to run the ball four yards. It depends on where they mark it. Parcells looks on with his running back, Joe Morris. Now Pat Hogson into the picture. One of the things that's hurting the Giants is they have to keep on third down and passing downs. They're keeping Bavaro in a lot as a blacker, as they did on that thing. Now you lose your big target and your pass receiver there. They're going to have to punt this one. They only need about an inch. Yeah, that is a tough, tough decision. That's not even an inch. I think you're playing the Raiders in Oakland, uh, in Los Angeles, in the Coliseum. I think you have to punt it. I think Bill Parcells did the right thing. You hate to do it. You know, you hate to say, oh, we ought to go for it. The fans are saying, come on, go for it. What the heck? But you can't do it. You have to punt it. That had to be a tough decision because they only needed less than an inch, really. Right, and especially when your defense is playing as well as the giant defense is, but you just can't leave it sitting there. Fulton Walker back deep for the Raiders. And Sean Londetta back to punt for the Giants. A lot of talking going on down there. Chases Walker all the way back inside the pin to about the six. He spins away from one man momentarily, finally gets it back to the ten. But Andy Hedden made sure that he stayed down. Another good kick by Landetta. That one 54 yards. And Walker brought it back four. So he nets 50. Oh, that's a game made for those with imagination. The Oklahoma Sooners ranked number one against the Hurricanes of Miami, who beat Oklahoma in Norman last year. This one's in the Orange Bowl. That ought to be a dandy. Oklahoma beat Minnesota yesterday 63 to nothing. They gained more yards returning punts than Minnesota did all day. Let's 
saw one time their quarterback went back to pass and then started to run to the right. The guy grabbed his jersey and half his jersey came off, ran back to the left, back to the right. Got a touchdown out of it. Marcus Allen carries over the right side. A pickup of three. Hasn't been able to break anything. Neither Morris nor Allen. Jim Bird on the stop that time. Raiders ball at their own 11 yard line. Second down. You see, those guys are getting in there close. You know, linemen like to get in close to the other guys and get things going. Leonard Marshall has half his jersey cut off. Jim Burt has his tape to him and all stretched out there. Leonard Marshall's widened his stance this year. Here's Plunkett back to throw. Looking. And he's going to run it. And does to about. 13, maybe a gain of one. Gary Reasons was the giant who made him go into his sliding maneuver. Have you noticed the older you get when you when you run, you kind of stay in place a little longer than you used to? Yes. Jim looked like he was running kind of in mud or something. I mean, his legs were going up and down like pistons, but he wasn't going anywhere. You take the same number of steps, you just don't cover as much ground. Those legs don't go quite, you know, he's, he's close to 39 years old. You know, we aren't talking about a, a young body out there. Third and six. Get back. Taylor on a blitz. Plunkett misses up the middle. Intended for Marcus Allen. Frank Hawkins, I beg your pardon, was the intended receiver. And Ray Guy comes on. The Raiders cling to that lead. 6 nothing with 9.38 left to play in the third quarter. Well, I think one of these teams is going to get a little offense going here pretty soon. The Giants, after this punt return, should be in pretty good position to get it done or to get it started. Lionel Manuel back to receive Rick Guy's punt. They met three times previously. The Raiders have won all three. off a hanger. Pretty good one. Manual signals for the fair catch just in giant territory. And so they will indeed take it over in pretty good shape. A punt of 36 yards by Ray Guy. 6-0. The Los Angeles Raiders lead the Giants. The Raider quarterback, Jim Plunkett, sitting and meditating, unable to generate much. The last four times they've had the ball, they have had it three plays and had a punt. And the Giants have it at midfield now. First and ten. Phil Sims leading his offensive unit. That's Morris in motion this time. Sims back to throw on first down. Has time. Has the tight end, Bavaro. And he struggles down to about the 38-yard line in the arms of Reggie McKenzie. Remember last year when Zeke Mowat was hurt for the Giants and the Giants were so concerned that they lost a, a very good player for the season and Mark Favaro came in and he started playing. Remember we'd see him in the beginning of the season, then in the middle he was better, and towards the end of the season he looked like one of the better tight ends in football. And now he really looks like one of the better. And now they say that he could be the best. Sims on first down, Gibbs to Morris, and Morris cuts into the Raiders' secondary. Inside the Raiders' 30, Bill Pickell, number 71, around his ankle. Pickup of five for Joe Morris. Ten times he's carried and picked up 28 yards. He doesn't know that his shoulder pads are outside his jersey. Well, I think you kind of got to get the feel of the game. You got to carry the ball. You got to get stuff sticking out, jersey hanging out, a little dirt and stuff. You know, and get in in the flow. I don't think Joe Morris has gotten in it yet. I don't think Marcus Allen has gotten in the flow of the game yet. That's Morris in motion again. And Sims back to throw again. Across the middle. Lionel Manuel inside the Raider 20 to about the 17. Chased and caught by Lester Hayes. A gain of 11. Watch Mark Bavaro on this play. We see Jerry Robinson. He's the linebacker. You see, he starts, he gets behind him. Then Matt Millen comes from the inside. That's how they double team him. And Matt Millen just pushed him down. But Robinson outsides him and Millen insides him. Those are the type of things they do to tight end. Linebackers do that to tight ends. Don't catch many passes when they knock you down, do you? Hard to see them. Tim 
Williams fakes to Morris, looks up the middle. Has a man, touchdown to Lionel Manuel. He juggled it, but came down with it. Chased by Lester Hayes. And the Giants have an opportunity to go to head. Go ahead. You know, that's interesting. Bill Parcells said that they were going to work Lionel Manuel on Lester Hayes. They tried early going straight up. Now on this drive, they hit him on two crossing patterns. And that's the second way. There's two ways for a wide receiver to beat a corner. Deep. One is to go deep straight up the field, and the other is like this. Watch Manuel. He starts in motion, comes all the way across, across the backfield. He stops. Now he comes up. Now he comes across back this way again. And you see he has Buster beat by four or five steps. So you can beat him deep, or you can beat him deep on the cross. Cooper for the extra point. Penalty flag is down. Jeff Rutledge was the holder. The extra point was good. And if all stands, the Giants will lead by one. Offside, number 99 on the defense. The point counts. Five yards on the kickoff. Five yards on the kickoff. That means they'll kick from the 40. And the Giants on this touchdown by Manuel and the extra point lead 7-6. Sunday on CBS Sports. The Giants lead the Raiders by one. 7.25 left in the third quarter. Joe Cooper to kick off to Stephon Adams and Fulton Walker. Walker's 41, Adams is 44. They want to get a running start. They aren't forming a straight line. Outside the 20, hit by Robbie Jones at about the 22. Return of 24. He was two yards deep in the end zone. You know, in that touchdown, the Giants caught everything that they wanted to. Here's Lionel Manuel. He's going to go in motion. That takes Lester Hayes with him. Now they're going to double Bavaro with the safety and the linebacker. That takes them out. The weak safety doubles here, and then when he comes across here, he's just man-to-man -man on Lester Hayes. But sometimes when you have a tight end like Bavaro, who's leading the NFC in pass receptions, he gets a double. You see right there, they go with him. Now that clears out this whole other side for Lionel Manuel to work man-to-man -man on Lester Hayes. Raider first down at their own 22 as Bunkett comes back to throw and throws. Marcus Allen out of the backfield to about the 29. Elvis Patterson on the stop, a gain of six. Scoring drive by the Giants. They got it at midfield, kept it two minutes, five seconds, and got the touchdown Sims to Manuel. And I think it was three things. I think, one, they had continuation of good pass protection. They got a little running in there to Joe Morris, and they started getting the ball to the wide receiver. Second down. Allen around the outside. He'll have the first. Up to about the 40, 41 perhaps. Elvis Patterson knocked him out of bounds. Allen's longest gain of the day, 13 yards. You know, this could be the type of situation right here for the Raiders where you have to take a great running back like Marcus Allen and maybe give him the ball five or six times in a row. Because as I said, he hasn't gotten in the flow of the game. He really hasn't run the ball enough. And I think they have to start that. Start giving it to him. Boom, 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 boom. Just keep pounding Allen. The great ones, like Allen, don't mind that kind of attention. They like it. Yeah. I mean, that's easy. <laughs> to say. Yeah. The ball does draw a crowd. Jesse Hester is a wide receiver now. For the Raiders, but wide to the left. Plunkett looks in his direction. Hester has it. And Jesse, with good speed, hustles into giant territory before he's caught by Lawrence Taylor. The Giant 34. First down, Raiders. I tell you, Perry Williams, the right corner, was playing off of Hester. He looked like he should have been in pretty good position to make the tackle. Watch him. There's there's Perry Williams. He's going off, off. Hester has good speed. He gives him too big a cushion. Catches the ball. Now he just gets in poor position. He looks like his left knee buckled when he went to uh, plant. Either that or he slipped. Something happened when he started to plant. Yeah, that's not very good play. Doki Williams wide right, Hester left. Williams in motion. 
bucket gets back to Allen. Allen slashes right for just a couple. Harry Carson will be the last giant to get up. George Martin is there as well. That's one of the things I think the Raiders felt they could do is run on him and then run to the right side. Marcus, Marcus Allen hurt his shoulder. He is twisting and not getting up very quickly. Not getting up at all. Let's see if we can see what happened. Well, the Raiders thought they could run on that right side against George Martin, who's primarily a pass rusher. But you see, he's going to get, get hit right there. Now, you don't know if it was a hit or something that happened on his way down or just having the weight on one thing and twisting another way or whatever. But now it looks like they're checking his, his right knee, his right ankle. Right ankle. Something on the bottom of that pile that we couldn't see as he was going down, I'm sure. Well, you know, that's, that's how they get a lot of those legs is where they get the foot, the cleat planted in the ground and then the leg bent another way. Marcus is up, but Marcus is limping. Hey, one thing, I was talking to Howie Long one time during training camp. We were talking about guys and players and who's tough and this stuff. He said, I'll tell you, the toughest guy that I've ever met in my life anywhere. He said, in the East, the Midwest, the West, anywhere, is this guy, Mar Marcus Allen. They've never met a tougher guy than him. Howie's been... Uh of a lot of tough people, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, Howie. I mean, Howie doesn't dine out. I mean, he's a guy that hangs out in the diners and stuff, the truck stops. Where's the cap? Vance Mueller has taken Marcus Allen's place. That's Mueller in most of his time. Bucket down the middle to Jesse Hester. At the 12 and another Raider first down. Taken down by Kenny Hill. Those two catches by Hester are the first two by Raider wide receiver. Well, you know, they weren't going to play Jesse Hester. He was their number one draft choice a year ago. He had an injured ankle, didn't play last week. They started Barksdale again this week, but they probably figured we have to win this game. We have to get someone in there that can get open and catch something. But I, just, I think they probably decided at halftime, Hester probably said, what the heck, I can go. And they said, what the heck, go then. And he's gone. <laughs> First down, Steve Strahan is now the deep back. The handoff is to him. Over the right side, he might have gotten the yard. George Martin, after a one-yard gain, makes the stop. 4-19 left to play, third quarter. You know, now that they've opened up a little and they got a couple of passes to a wide receiver, now somewhere here, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to Todd Christensen. He's kind of been silent so far today, and of course, he's a big, big part of this Raider offense. And he has that ability to work himself into the open spot. And the closer he gets to the goal line, the better he is. Mueller has now worked his way into the Raider backfield. Christensen has yet to catch a pass today. Second down. Plunkett. A blitz from behind, and down he goes. The ball might be loose. And the Giants come up with it. Jim Burke still running. He's to the 40, the 30, the 20. Burke's going. He's going to go into the end zone. Of course, it's not going to count, but when you're a nose tackle, man, you get everything you can. <laughs> Look at him. He takes the mouthpiece out. He's going to hold the ball. There's not a lot of room left inside that jersey, is there? Oh, I know. And if he keeps squeezing that ball with that left arm, there's not going to be much ball left. <laughs> got to be his longest run ever. Oh, yeah. He was just working out. I mean, he looked pretty good going down there. Had nice form. Tucked the ball away. The Giants offense have the ball now. And Burt's still walking back with the yeah. ball. Well, he's he's going to keep that thing. Morris comes in motion. The Giants lead by a point. Sims trying for more. Gets Bavaro. And Bavaro gets away. And now he's still on his feet. Stacy Turan got a ride. Hey, I don't know what that guy's made of. You know, but there's a lot of guys his age that are probably kind of upset because when he got there, he got all the good parts. I mean, he really does. I mean, he's a big guy, got big arms, big legs, 
strong. He's a good-looking guy. Looks like Rambo. Quiet. <laughs> Takes a lot of guys to get him down. He's got a good deal. He got some good balance to go along with the rest of that stuff, too, didn't he? Yeah. Here's Morris. Cuts up field. Falls for about three. Tripped up by Mitch Willis. Matt Millen also in on the tackle. Tom Flores. Looks concerned and should be. Well, I think, yeah, you know, I think that I think that first game took a lot out of him, you know, in the whole team. And the second game and now coming here. And let's watch what happened to Jim Plunkett. You know, coming from the backside, see he doesn't see it as he gets hit by Elvis Patterson coming on a on a corner blitz. The ball just pops out. Terry Kennard was back in there as well. Here's Sims throwing outside again, intended for Bavaro. Rod Martin on the coverage that time. Yeah, that was Kennard that made that hit. It was a safety blitz, yeah. Kennard coming from the backside. All the way around from the outside. That's a tough thing for those quarterbacks. You know, I wonder if someday they won't put, like, mirrors on their helmet so they can have, like, a rear view mirror. Because a right-handed quarterback, he's looking to the right. He can't see or feel that backside. They put a little mirror up there. As he's looking to his right, he can see in the mirror, and he sees, boom, here comes Kennard, and then he does something, throws the ball, or doesn't fumble. He knows. He's got instant replay now. Mirrors might not be out of the question. Tim flushed out of the pocket. Still has some time. Fires caught at about the 26. Stacy Robinson covered by Mike Haynes, but complete nevertheless. A gain of 21. You know, one thing, Mike Haynes is maybe the best cornerback in the National Football League. The Giants really didn't have any intention of working on him today. Watch how good he covered. He's like a blanket. He's all over. I mean, he goes out, he goes up. Now he thinks by now the play should be over, and Stacy Robinson still had one more move. And I mean, the key to that, of course, John, was all the time that Sims had. Good pass protection, because he was able to go up, out, up again, back, curl, hook. He did about seven things on that pass pattern. The whole playbook. Solomon Miller was the man in motion. Sims going deep. Picked off by Van McElroy in the end zone, and he stays there. And the Raiders will take over at their own 20. With 1.21 left in the first quarter. The Raiders stopped the Giants and Phil Sims. You know, Solomon Miller was the motion man. I think that's who Sims was looking for. Miller was knocked down in the middle of the field. I think Sims maybe been trying to throw this ball away. But watch right here in the middle of the screen, you see? He went down, so now there's no one out there except Joe Morris. He could have been just trying to throw that ball out of the end zone, and McElroy got back there and got the interception. Maybe he didn't see McElroy. He was back there, as he should have been playing center field. See, now watch what happens to Robinson there. I mean, to Solomon Miller, 87. He's running inside. He gets knocked down. So now there's only one man out there, and I think he tried to throw it away from him. Raider first down at their own 20. Plunkett gets to Vance Mueller. Mueller struggles outside to about the 24. There's Phil Sims over on the sideline, a little unhappy with himself. Well, you usually have two guys out there. He's going to talk on the phone about it now, but, you know, he's going to have the short guy, Solomon Miller, and probably the deep guy, Morris. Then he lost one. Then everyone reacts to the second one. So he's probably asking the coach, or the coach up, up here in the press box is probably telling him what happened to Solomon Miller. He was down. Second and six. Bucket. Under pressure again. Does get rid of it to Vance Mueller. Mueller down the sideline. He's not out of bounds yet. Mueller knocked down finally at the 12-yard line, and now they say he stepped out of bounds in front of the Raider bench, way back at about the 41-yard line. Terry Kennard finally got Mueller down. And they're arguing back here in the 40, the officials trying to mark it, and the Raider players and coaches are arguing with him that he didn't step out there. I tell you, this Vance Mueller, he's a, a rookie that can really run. He made this team on his speed, and his speed alone. He's from a from a small college from Occidental. You see, he went out of bounds right there. Now he's going to come up the sideline, and that's where they're going to mark it. 
It's unique in that it's his in foot, inside foot that goes out of bounds right yeah. there. If it was his right heel, his left foot, I think, stayed in. Yeah. The right heel in a crossover hit the white. Got some paint, and it was a good call. Especially when it was on the Raiders' sideline. You know, you, you always feel it was on your sideline. You have a chance to talk him out of it. That official was right there, and he saw that heel hit it. They're still arguing, though. 28 seconds on the clock. 28. He stepped out of bounds back here. 28 with seconds on the clock. Red Cashin is telling you there are 28 seconds on the clock, not eight. But what they do is when he steps out of bounds, That's the clock has to stop. Right. But I don't believe that it takes him 28 seconds to run that far. He's supposed to be like a 9-4, 9-5 Look at him. Watch it. What? Ooh. That thing, that crossover, that right foot. Right there. Sometimes the ball gets heavy. Maybe the ball was out of bounds, too. Maybe the ball crossed the plane of the sideline. They're still arguing there in the sideline in the 40-yard line. That really is not your after-dinner conversation going on right there. They're saying he didn't touch, but he did. At the 40, first down Raiders. They've adjusted the clock now. And there's 28 seconds left for Rick Cashin had asked. of Steve Strahan. Pass is incomplete, intended for Steve Strahan. One thing Plunkett has gotten in this deal is he's gotten some time. We see Leonard Marshall, who was a leading uh, uh, sacker last year, the Giants, is having some trouble there. He is getting double teamed, but that's pretty good pass protection by Bruce Davis and Charlie Hanna. That's as good as you can do. Yeah, we haven't heard much from uh, from Wilbur Marshall today, Leonard Marshall. I looked at the Giants' statistics on the way out here. Who had made the tackles, and his name didn't appear in the first two games. Look at it, smack down. Carl Banks. And he has become a good-sized load as well. You know, it's funny, we haven't heard much from Lawrence Taylor or Leonard Marshall, and here it's Carl Banks this time from the other side. They got Plunkett on the last thing from the backside when he fumbled the ball, and that time Carl Banks came right in his face. He didn't need mirrors on that one. No. He saw Banks all the way. That's going to be the end of the third quarter with third and 16. Marcus Allen up and walking around on the sideline. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Giants seven and the Los Angeles Raiders six on two field goals. Next week, John Madden and I will be in Cincinnati where the Super Bowl champion Bears will pay a visit led by Walter Payton. Bengals have some weapons, John. I'll tell you one thing. I think I think that they have the weapons to beat a bear defense. I don't know that they'll do it, but they have the thing. I mean, they have a quarterback in Boomer Esiason. They have Speed and Eddie Brown on the outside. They got the big running back, and they're a team that can move the ball. Marcus Allen just went up the tunnel, went to the Raider locker room just a moment ago. Getting back to that Chicago. Cincinnati deal. In reading your book, you think Walter Payton is the best ever? I think he's the best ever. You know, when you consider everything, I mean, the guy is, is blocking, his running, his pass receiving, and being able to do it over a period of years. Bucket in the direction of Jesse Hester and two Giants right back there with him. Kennard and Perry Williams for an update now. Let's go back to our New York studio. Here again is Brent Musburger. Well, Pat, just down the San Diego Freeway in Jack Murphy Stadium, the Washington Redskins are hanging tough against the Chargers. George Rogers scores. They add the extra point, so they trail by one point, 24-23, fourth quarter. Back to Pat and John. Those Redskins are a team to be reckoned with. They are, and those Chargers are a team, and no matter what the record is, they're always going to scare you. Ray Guy back to punt for the Los Angeles Raiders. signals fair catch the Giants will take over 
We'll return to Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Dodge, setting new standards of performance. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? Giants start first and ten, their own 30. 14.45 left to play. Giants lead 7-6. Stumbles for about five. Van McElroy and Jerry Robinson made the stop. They give him four. Van McElroy and Jerry Robinson the stop. What they're talking about is the next time the Raiders get the ball, you know, in the formations and the adjustments that they're going to use. And of course, the Giants do have a problem with Elvis Patterson has an injured groin. He's going to be out. So rookie Mark Collins is going to have to play that that cornerback position in this fourth quarter. Collins got an interception last week. But he still is a rookie. Straight ahead to Maurice Cotton. Only his second carry of the day, and he got only a couple of yards. Bill Pickell on the bottom of the pile. Next Sunday on CBS, the NFL Today, followed by the Super Bowl champions, the Bears at Cincinnati. 12.30 Eastern Time, John Madden and I will be there. Bengals play Thursday night, and so they'll have some time to rest. Third and four at the Coliseum. They could have the battle of refrigerators and fullbacks in that game. Yeah. Let them both play fullback and run into each other. Woo. to the races too. Joe Morris chased by James Davis and caught by Davis. They finally pop one. 53 yards for Joe Morris and he's calling for some rest. I don't know what that signal is. That you know, you know that's a signal for I'm hungry or something. I want to eat, not well, that, that I want to come out. That means I can't talk. I tell you, he had good blocking over here in the right side. We see Bavaro blocking down. He doubles with Nelson, then Bavaro turns out. He blocked a guy to the inside, then he blocked a guy to the outside, then the left guard, Billy Yard, pulled right up through that hole. That's a pretty good play. I mean, Bavaro did get two. He got a guy to his inside, then a guy to his outside. Boom, Hard was up through the hole. Boom, Morris was right behind him. And Solomon Miller got a good block. First down, Giants. Roussan has replaced Morris. Sims down the middle, touchdown. Lionel Manuel, second of the day. He got a rebound, but he hung on. The Giants extend their lead. Hey, Bill Parcells has to feel good about this one because that could be the one that put the clamps on it the way they're playing defense now. That's the second one on Mike Haynes, but look, he's right there. He really has good coverage. The ball is tipped. He tips the ball right into Lionel Manuel's hand. You know, I mean, that's that's having good coverage and getting beaten, but it's good concentration by Manuel, you know, working against the tough Jeff defender Robinson. and always being ready for a pop out. extra point, flags are down. It's ironic. I don't think that ball would have been caught if Haynes didn't tip it. It would have been behind him. I know it. False start, no play. Number 60 on the offense. We'll try from the seventh. Here it is again, the touchdown. Well, wait, you know, I think you're right. I mean, I think if Haynes doesn't hit the ball and redirect it and take something off it and bring it down a little, Manuel probably doesn't get it. Flores over on the sideline with his quarterback Plunkett for the extra point. The Giants were penalized five yards, so the extra point will come from the 20 now. And of course, with the Raiders having six, this is a big extra point. Sorry, it's from the 15, just inside the 15. Rutledge is the holder. And he got it. Bill Parcells has watched his team come back with two second-half touchdowns. And they lead the Raiders 14-6 with 12-22 left in the game. Chance lead the Raiders with 12-22 left to play, 14-6. Ben 
up in the fourth quarter in 1986. They got 100 points last year in the fourth quarter. No points this year in the fourth quarter. They haven't scored a touchdown in the last two games. And that's why I think the way that they're going, the way the giant defense is playing, when the Giants got that touchdown, that is coming close to putting a cap on this game. Cooper will kick off. Stefan Adams and Fulton Walker back deep for the Raiders. Getting out at the five yard line. And Cooper chases Fulton Walker, Stefan Adams back to about the one. Adams gets out to about the 25. Don't forget again that classic matchup. The Oklahoma Sooners against the Miami Hurricanes. Miami returns, by the way, 20 starters in all. Including Benny Testaverde, the quarterback, running backs Melvin Bratton and Alonzo Highsmith, and a linebacker named George Myra Jr. That's a familiar name. That's something. Usually quarterbacks don't oh, parent linebackers. linebackers. <laughs> Number 56 of the receivers. It's first down at 10. Raiders were caught for holding on the kickoff return, and so they start even deeper in their own territory. Kansas City in the fourth quarter over Houston, and San Francisco has taken the lead over New Orleans. That's in the fourth quarter. Here we are also in the fourth quarter with the Giants leading the Raiders 14-6. First down, Raiders at their own 13. Plunkett retreats. Gets it out to his tight end, Todd Christensen. That's the first pass he's caught all day. I don't know if that's part combination that the Giants have had good defense <clears throat> or Plunkett in starting his first game isn't seeing Todd Christensen. One thing the Raiders do have working for them in this fourth quarter, if they are indeed to come from behind, is that the wind is at their back. That has a long way to blow. Yeah. Plunkett's got a man open. Dokey Williams, and he's still on his feet. Williams struggles to the giant 39. Perry Williams finally knocked him down. A 42-yard gain. And the Raiders move into giant territory. Well, we, we, we were talking about a rookie cornerback, Mark Collins. He didn't get a bump out there. He's playing zone. He hit Doki Williams. The safety, Kenny Hill, number 48, didn't get over, and they were able to hit Doki Williams between the two. That's just a that safety man time to get over there if he's going to cover you deep. Yeah, you have to get a bump on that double zone. Those corners have to bump that wide receiver. Back goes Plunkett. Out to Vance Mueller. Mueller steps out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. The play before. Yeah, here's what happens. You see, Mark Collins is going to come up here, but he doesn't get the hit on Doki Williams. Kenny Hill has to get over, and he gets over too late, and Williams catches the ball here. Now watch as the corner comes up. You see right there, he has to bump him. He doesn't. He misses him. The safety inside is looking at the tight end, and he can't get over. So Doki Williams gets right up the sideline. And the safety who didn't get over missed the tackle. And the weak safety missed the tackle. And Perry Williams finally made it. Second and six Raiders at the Giant 35. Bumping. Quickly outside Christensen. Hit it about the 31. Carl Banks took him out of bounds. We're at the Los Angeles Coliseum, where the Giants lead the Raiders 14-6. We have 10-27 left to play. Todd Christensen here just caught his first one. Now he catches his second one here. It's just a short out. But the linebacker, Carl Banks, is hitting him and stays right there with him. Keeps it down to a five-yard gain and no first down. Now this puts the Raiders in a third down situation. But of course, being down 14 to 6, even if they don't make it on third, they'll go for it on fourth here. Third and one. You saw what they had done on their last possession. Strahan is the new man. Bucket's going to throw. Bucket's going to run. And he's got the first down. Strahan was in the end zone and appeared to be open. room and the reason for the applause is the return of Marcus Allen 
and the effort of Jim Plunkett. Well, they're used to things like that in Los Angeles. You know, the old Hollywood thing, the, the old gun comes into town, and then the other guy leaves or something, then he comes back in to, you know, to capture the girl. This is a, you know, this is a script type of deal here. Written for this Sunday, Vance Mueller is behind Hawkins. And the handoff is to Mueller. He gets maybe a yard out of the grasp of Carl Banks again. You know, it's one thing uh, that's interesting. Early in the game, Lawrence Taylor was kind of dominating that side. And uh, into the second quarter, the second half, and I haven't heard much from Lawrence Taylor. Now, maybe they are staying away from him. They seem to be working more to the right side. Those two guys here really haven't been heard from a lot, that right side of the Giants' defense. That would be 70 and 56. Jesse Hester and Doki Williams are both split wide left. Now, Doki comes in motion. Bucket pumps, throws. Has Mueller. And Mueller gets down to about the 21 before the Giants' Andy Hedden leads the charge to bring him down a gain of five. Herb Welch was there to help. Up another crucial third down situation as Marcus Allen re enters the contest. They're saying he went in the phone booth. <laughs> we talked about him earlier. I mean, here's a tough guy. Uh, you know, he's, he's one of the all time great runners that ever played this game, but, but he brings a lot with him. Brings a lot of courage and a lot of ability. You know, and the Raiders, you know, we're talking here, they need two scores. So this one drive, they have to get a drive here, get a score here, and then yet get another one. Not just a touchdown. They need a touchdown eventually, but they'll take the field goal here if they have to. Timeout, Los Angeles. And that could cost them down the road. Seven, just over seven and a half minutes left to play. And the Giants' lead is eight has a devastating defense. Number two right Miami feels a defense-defying aerial attack. The two top teams in the nation next Saturday on CBS Sports. That's the situation. Just over seven and a half minutes left to play at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Giants leading the Raiders 14-6. Jim Plunkett on that play, Pat. Uh, you know, he started, he was going to roll to his right. He was trying to get the ball out here, but watch him. He starts out here, guard pulls in front of him. He doesn't have anyone. So now he stops, he returns, he gets out of the grasp right there, and he's running to the left and throwing back to his right to Todd Christensen. I think this is who he was trying to hit. I think he was trying to throw to Marcus Allen. Watch what happens to Allen. He has good coverage here. Harry Carson's there. And right there, Allen starts to limp. Vance Mueller replaces him. This is Hawkins. And Hawkins hammers down to about the seven. Jim Burt on the stop. Now, the Raiders are in a three-down area here because they have to kick a field goal because they need a combination of two scores. And it could be a seven and a three or a three and a seven. With six minutes, 25 seconds, they have to think in terms of getting a score, getting the ball back, and getting another one. We've got an illegal formation. The illegal man on the left side of the line will be a five-yard penalty. Bill Parcell spotted that penalty, spotted that violation, and he had walked all the way down to about the 10-yard line, exercising his vocal cords, and he got their attention. You know, that's that's the amazing thing. One, that he got their attention, and two, that they did anything about it. They usually don't listen to coaches. It's an illegal formation is what was called. And I'm not sure what it was, quite frankly. Well, of course, you can get that by having too many men in the backfield or the, you know, uh, not covering the tackle. So that'll make it first... 16. They can make a first down without scoring. Bucket. Incomplete. And 
intended for Mueller, who made the dive, covered by Mark Collins. Here's Mueller. He's going out there in motion, and then he's just running up, and then he's going to run back in and hook. I think Plunkett was expecting him to be outside, and Mueller was working back to the inside. That's a tough thing. When you lose a Marcus Allen, you not only lose a great player, but you have to put in a player who you haven't practiced with as much. Marcus Allen had to come out. Mueller has taken his play. He's in the backfield with Hawkins. Retreats. There's the blitz. Oki Williams was the intended receiver. No penalty marker down. Mark Collins on the coverage. There was some doubt about whether he'd be able to play or not. But he is. That official's giving it right back to Doki Williams. He gets behind Collins by a step. Collins gets up there and throws that left arm up there. That didn't look like pass interference to me. That looked like good coverage. He's pretty good. Watch, he gets his left hand up there. He doesn't touch him at all. Well, the ball's beyond him. I thought that was that was pretty good coverage, yeah. He might have stepped on his heel right there. Still good coverage. Third down now for the Raiders and 15. Jesse Hester is wide to the left. Look out for Christensen here. Over Christensen head. Christensen's head and incomplete. And they have to take the field goal. They, they have play. to take the field goal here, and then they get where a, a touchdown can win the game. Chris Barr comes out. Chris had illegal formation hurt, then the Giants had good defense. I think, like you say, they, they wanted to go to Todd Christensen. They did, but the Giants knew it, too, and they had him double covered. Barr is hit from 35 and 22. This one looks like it's going to be about 33. And if they make it, it'll be the first time that they've scored in the fourth quarter this year. Mark Wilson will hold. Call it 34 yards out. Chris Barr, perfect all year. He's still perfect. Barr's third of the day, and that's all the Raider points, and it's 14-9 Giants with five. 44 left to play in the contest. It's been a defensive struggle all day. Pat Summerall, John Madden, the familiar site of the Los Angeles Coliseum, where the Giants lead the Raiders 14-9. The Giants come into this game 1-1. And the Raiders come in 0 and 2. First time since 1964. And they face a very difficult schedule down the road. Yeah, one of the things both of these teams do, it's, you know, the way the schedule formula works, this year the AFC West, which is probably the strongest division in the AFC, plays against the NFC East, which is probably the strongest division in the NFC, and they play four games against each other. So you get their division games then their extra games are against the other division that makes for a tough schedule for teams from both of those divisions the formula is very complicated but if you look down the road at where the competition might come from the Giants and the Redskins play the identical schedule they both play the same opponent Lee Roussin and Mark Collins back deep accepting bars kick off is Roussin the one Gets to about the 16. A return of 15. You know, Bill Parcells saw that illegal formation, and that got the Raiders a five-yard penalty, and it was a big play. Now, what happens is here's their two tight ends here and their wide receiver here. There's no wide receiver on this side, so that makes the tackle here the end man on the line of scrimmage and makes him eligible, and that's why it's an illegal formation. The end man on the line of scrimmage was the pass. Unless he reports, of course. Yeah, unless he reports, and of course, in that situation, he didn't. First down. down by Stacy Toran. The pressure now, loss of one, the pressure now is on the Raider defense. 
I think the pressure on the giant offense is that what they need now is to take time off the clock and get first down. And of course, you take the opposite of that. What the Raiders have to do is get penetration, make things happen, don't let them get first downs, and get the ball back. The Giants will go back across country after this contest is over. They face the Saints at Giants Stadium next week. It starts with the NFL today at 12:30. Second and 11. Morris lost one. Singh's probably going to have to put it up. Morris comes in motion. Do not throw it to the other folks. Chased by Piquel, eludes Piquel, throws Navarro. Navarro knocked out of bounds. Enough, I believe, for a giant first down, or very nearly. I'll tell you one thing, for a second-year guy, this guy, Bavaro, is cool, isn't he? Look, here it is, a big game. They're playing the Raiders in, in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Guys are doubling him, the linebacker has him. He's fighting off the linebacker, getting by a safety, getting out there, raising his hand. Here I am, here. How much room do I have out there? Let me catch it, stay in bounds, and take a shot. And get a first down. Bavaro six today. That's 18 for the year already in three games. I like that guy. I, you know, because he's a complete guy. He's not one of these guys that just catch passes. I mean, he blocks, he pass protects, he catches short ones, deep ones, runs over guys. Third and about a foot. Morris has it. Mike Haynes made the stop with help from Van McElroy, but a crucial first down as Morris picked up four yards. I'll tell you, the thing that has impressed me, too, Pat, is this giant offensive line. I mean, I know that they were worried about Brad Benson being able to, to stand up there over in that left side against Howie Long, but I think they've all done a good job. I mean, I think they've really given Phil Sims, for the most part, good pass protection. They all wear numbers in the 60s, and they hang together. They really have. Four minutes left to play. First down, Giants. Up, but Morris got about eight. Hey, a lot of stuff goes down on there in the field. You get guys running, hitting, talking, yelling, trying to get first downs, trying to stop the first first downs. Remember at halftime we said that, you know, that's one of the things I think that has to have one of these running backs, either Marcus Allen or Joe Morris, has to start making himself foul. In the second half, Morris did. I mean, he didn't have anything in the first half, 20-some yards. Comes out here, now he has 100 yards. And that's the first back in regular season to get 100 yards against the Raiders in 18 straight regular season games. Second and one. Miller was the man in motion. Flag is down. It was Maurice Carthon with the ball. Looked to me like the Raiders jumped off sides or got in that neutral zone or whatever they do when they call the defense. I think it was Howie Long. Decline, first down. Giants pick up another clutch first down. Sometimes they say they encroach. Sometimes they say they line up in a neutral zone. Sometimes they say they're offside. That case, Howie Long was offsides. I think you can do all three at once. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can encroach in offsides. Turan comes out. First down, Giants. Their own four just outside their 45. Clock running with two, two minutes, 44 seconds left to play. Now down to 240. Good drive. Joe hammers for maybe a yard. Maybe a loss. Lyndon King, the ex San Diego Charger, number 52, made the stop. When the Raiders picked up Lyndon King from the Chargers, they they going to use him as a linebacker against the run and also as a pass rusher. Bill you know, Morris looks upset that he's taken out, but he looked a little ding too, didn't he? Well, you remember he had a problem in years past, hyperventilating. And he also had a problem getting dinged. Remember, they had a deal last year where when he'd get dinged, they'd hide his helmet because he would get yep. dinged and then he'd run back in the game. So they started, when he got dinged, they started taking his helmet away from him. 
I think it's that shot right there by Lyndon King as he was coming through. He got up through that tackle, and Lyndon King came across and hit him in the head. That might have been a dong. That was a little bit more than a ding, I think. Yeah, well, it was a ding-dong because he went right for the chin strap to pull it off. Atlanta beat Dallas 37-35 in the closing seconds. Tampa Bay had lost 19 in a row on the road. They beat Detroit on the road. Rams 3-0 now over Indianapolis. Buffalo behind Jim Kelly. Beat St. Louis 17-10. Cardinals 0-3. Denver 33-7 over Buddy Ryan's Philadelphia Eagles. They're 0-3. Minnesota over Pittsburgh 31-7. Their worst start, the Steelers, in 16 years. Seattle 38-31 over New England. And look at that score. 51-45. Overtime. San Francisco leading New Orleans and Washington coming back. Down goes. And the hands of Greg Townsend, the quarterback, Phil Sims. I think that was one of those plays that they thought that everyone was going to be pursuing. Now, that could be one that Sims didn't tell anyone, and he was just going to keep the ball and bootleg the other way, or maybe it was a planned a plan call, but that was what you call a naked bootleg. Naked meaning he didn't have anyone out there to block for him. Sims headed over to the sideline, and we'll get the two-minute warning. Watch what happens. You see the backs are going to the right. He fakes to them. Then he comes out here in the bootleg with no blockers. That's a naked bootleg. Didn't I bet work. you're right. He didn't tell anybody he was going to do that. He just wanted to kill some time. 14-9. Giants lead with two minutes to play. Tonight on CBS at 60 Minutes, followed by George Washington, The Forging of a Nation, starring Barry Boswick and Patty Duke. And then also tonight, Walter Cronkite at large, the first of two primetime specials that Walter will have this season. That's all coming up tonight, right where you are now, here on CBS. Giants have it, third down. Joe Morris lost a yard and lost his underyard game, and now he's got it back. Into the secondary and gets about nine. Van McElroy stopped him. Bill Pickell helped. That's an interesting play that they do. They just run it to the weak side. A straight ahead dive play. He starts inside and then can go back offside. It's just one of those college fear type plays. And Joe Morris has made a lot of yards on that play over the years. And he got his 100 yard game back. 18 carries for 110 now. The Giants will have to punt, but the Raiders are out of timeouts with a minute 49 remaining. And they now have to have that touchdown. the score here with a minute 49. Next Sunday here on CBS. Many of you will see the 49ers visit Miami. Starts with the NFL today. John and I will be in Cincinnati for the Bears match against the Bengals. New Orleans visits the Giants at Giants Stadium. Green Bay against the Minnesota Vikings. Packers and Bears play tomorrow night. Detroit against Cleveland. Neighborhoods clashing. The Rams at Philadelphia. Rams 3-0. Eagles 0-3. Atlanta, surprising Atlanta, 3-0. Goes to Tampa Bay, and the Buccaneers now 1-2. Landetta back to kick. I think this is where the Raiders ought to go for a punt block in this situation. Fulton Walker standing back at about the 10. They've got to try to block this one. Don't get it. Let it go over his head and it goes into the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. Raiders have 80 yards to go. 46 yard punt. By Landetta. Tom Flores with encouragement from the sideline. That's the situation. The Giants 14, the Raiders 9. Raiders out of timeouts. The Giants have three. Won't use many, I wouldn't think. Jim Plunkett leads his troops back on to the field. have 80 yards to go. Doki Williams comes out wide to the right. 
Jesse Hester split wide to the left. Christensen, number 46, the tight end. Bucket looking in his direction and finding Todd Christensen. A pickup of about five, maybe six. Harry Carson made the hit. Clock running a minute 23, and the Raiders again have no timeout. Bucket back to throw and does throw down the middle of Hawkins. Should be enough for a first down. Carson again on the stop. They'll move the sticks and move them quickly. The Raiders ready to go quickly as well. This is where the Raiders need an outside receiver, someone that can get the ball and get out of bounds. Mueller can't get out of bounds. Those kind of passes are not going to get you much. And the clock continues to run with 48 seconds now left to play. That's the situation at the Coliseum. The Raiders out of timeouts with a long way to go. I don't know about these passes. That's not going to get it done. You even don't... If, yeah, even if he tries to throw one to the sideline and it's incomplete, at least it stops the clock. He has to stop the clock. The Giants on defense have to keep everything inside. Got to get this ball incomplete or out of bounds, one of the two. For Doki Williams. And it's out of bounds, but they burned a lot of time. Nine seconds on the scoreboard clock. The yeah, Giants. he really, excuse, excuse me, me. Go ahead. I was going to say he really wasted too much time getting those short completions inside, and the Giants did a good job of, not, of getting on the guy, tackling him, and not letting him get even close to the sideline. Nine seconds remain. Fourth down, clock stop. The Giants 14, the Los Angeles Raiders 9. This could be the last play. And the Raiders could be 0-3. The Giants would move to 2-1. Cowboys lost, so they'd be back in the first place tie if Washington loses. Bucket for the bundle. over Bill Parcells has to be elated first time the Giants have ever beaten the Raiders and he almost he hurt Jim Burke in the post game celebration <laughs> coming up next 60 minutes except on the West Coast I'll tell you it's tough to be a player around an excited coach like Bill Parcells was Discouraging for Jim Plunkett, 38-year-old Jim Plunkett. Coming off the bench after Mark Wilson went down and a happy trip back for Bill Parcells and his Giants. They beat the Raiders for the first time in their history, 14-9, their fourth meeting. And that's the final. Don't forget, coming up next, the NFL today, the wrap-up show with Brent Musburger. Number two. Next, the NFL Today, the wrap-up show with Brent Busberger. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. They're on CBS, and on that broadcast tonight, Diane Sawyer will be interviewing Imelda Marcos, and among other things, she will talk to her about all those secret Swiss bank accounts. Now, a quick look at the scores on the way to 60 minutes. For the first time, the Giants have beaten the Raiders. 14-9 is the final in that game. Houston and Kansas City still in progress in the fourth. The Chiefs are going to win it. It's 27-13. San Francisco beats New Orleans 26-17, the final in that game. About two minutes to go, and the Redskins can still pull this one out. 27-23 charges with the lead. Atlanta over Dallas, one of the big upsets of the day, 37-35. The Jets in overtime, they beat Miami 51-45. Ten touchdown passes in that game, six by Dan Marino. Seattle comes from behind, 17 fourth quarter points. They beat the Patriots 38-31. The Buccaneers win for the first time on the road in 20 games, 24-20 over the Lions. Minnesota now 2-1, 31-7 over the Steelers. The Denver Broncos 3-0, 33-7 over the Eagles. Buffalo and Jim Kelly.
Kelly win today, 17-10, although Kelly did not have a touchdown pass. The Rams are now 3-0, and it is 24-7. The Rams with the win there. Let me update one score for you. The Redskins have just scored to take the lead out there inside of two minutes. Now, a reminder that next Saturday afternoon, there's the update, and the Redskins scored to tack on six more. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time, be there. Could be the game of the year in college football. From the Orange Bowl, the top-rated Oklahoma Sooners against the Miami Hurricanes. 60 minutes is coming up next. Diane Sawyer will be talking to Imelda Marcos, among other things, about all those shoes she collected over in the Philippines. We'll see you next week. So long, everybody.